Good evening everyone and welcome back to LTFC Plus for live coverage of tonight's first division game between Longford Town and UCD. I think it's fair to say two teams trying to find a bit of form and bounce back after disappointing results at the weekend. It's myself, Kieran Burke, delighted to be joined once again on commentary by Tony G. And we've got the teams on screen for you now. Tony, you're going to run us through the starting 11 first of all for the hosts, Longford Town. Yeah, and Kieran Longford Town have two changes from the defeat on uh, Friday night last against Bray Wanderers. And you see Sam Verdon coming in and Dylan Hand also coming in. Dylan Grimes is out injured. Joe Gorman is only on the bench. So they're the two changes for Longford Town. So probably the same formation, three at the back. And uh, you have Lee Stacey in goals. You have Michael McDonnell. You have uh, Joe Manley. And, of course, you have... Uh, you have the the other full back then is uh, Dylan, Hand. Dylan Hand yeah Dylan Hand and then in midfield you're going to have Shane Elworthy on one flank Adam Evans on the other flank and then you're going to have A. Durvin and Dean Zamba there and then you're going to have uh, Sam Verdon and Dean Byrne are the two behind the lone striker Rob Manley and the subs for Longford Town Luke Dennison Carl Chambers Aaron McKay Matthew O'Brien Aaron McNally Callum Warfield and Joe Gorman so moving on to the UCD team and UCD well, they line out as follows how to work out uh, how this team will uh, start positioning Kieran because lots of changes from the usual start lineup Evan Ozem is out Paul Doyle is only on the bench the Farrells are only on the bench as well. Michael Keane on the bench. So you have Lorcan Healy in goals. You have then Mark, D uh, Mark Dignam, Harry McAvoy, Josh Collins. If they go for their 3 3 2 2, they could form a back three. But uh, Michael Gallagher can play midfield or in defence. And Evan Weir is also a defender. So it would be interesting to see how they line out. Luke Bohr, midfield. Jack Keeney, midfield. And uh, Michael Gallagher. Well, he can play with defensive midfield, but probably midfield this evening. And then you could have you could have a four-three-three, Karen, even here because you could have Liam Kerrigan up front with Colin Whelan and Yo-Yo Mahadi. Yeah, and no, I'd imagine Michael Gallagher will line out a right full. That's where he played in the in the game um, just after the the restart of, right. of football, and he was very very good from right full there. He got forward a lot in the second half in particular and created a lot of chances the one surprise for me on that UCD team is to see Paul Doyle on the bench perhaps maybe he's got a knock or just uh, the amount of games going on recently they've decided to rest him but I thought he was a real key player for them a real uh, playmaker and such in that nil-nil draw at the UCD ball uh, just after the resumption of play UCD out on the pitch here Tony I'd love to get your thoughts on the starting 11 for Longford and in particular the shape three at the back it's a, it's a big talking point among the supporters at the moment do you think that system has worked overall? Uh, well reserve judgment on that initially but recently you have to say it's not working Kieran mm. conceding lots of goals and it just hasn't uh, panned out in the last couple of games really yeah um, the, the performance in Bray was very very poor of course uh, great to see a couple of fans in the ground tonight uh, season ticket holders they're back and they're giving the uh, team a bit of support as they come out on the pitch here but uh, Longford and Darrod Oil they know they have to bounce back from that performance against Bray they looked very very unorganised at the back they didn't really create a lot going forward so I thought there might be a change of shape tonight we'll see now and as they come out with the field maybe Darrod's going to surprise us here but it does look like initially it will be the three at the back again for Longford Town yeah, it certainly does look like that as well, and it looks like UCD are going with uh, three at the back, and it looks like Michael Geller, who can play right back or right midfield, is actually going to be sort of right wing back there, and you're going to have in uh, the... Uh, back three there Harry McAvoy uh, Josh Collins and just trying to work out who uh, the other uh, member of the back three is so it'll be interesting to see uh, how UCD will eventually it looks like they're going to go three at the back anyways and it looks like they're still going to do 3-3-2-2 three, three, two, two, the usual formation just with different yeah, players it's a very attacking formation, lots of attacking players. Uh, we've got Yo Yo Maddy there wearing the nine shirt, lethal in front of goal in recent games, top scorer in the division. Colin Whelan as well, what a find he's been for the students. He arrived from uh, Waterford's under 19 setup. He scored a lot of goals down at the RSC um, at the underage level, and he, he's carried that on now into senior football with UCD. Liam Kerrigan's been brilliant this season as well. Uh, they've got threat, they've got quality all over the pitch. This is going to be a good battle down in front of us here between Evans and uh, Gallagher. As I said, Gallagher looked to get forward a lot, so if Evans can pick and choose his moments to get in behind that could be uh, definitely an outlet for Longford Town but he's uh, going to have to do a lot of defensive work as well the uh, the number 11 for Longford here he certainly is and of course uh, UCD capable of uh, 
Racking up big score lines, six away to Cove, eight at home to Wexford, but then losing 3 0 to Galway at home and then losing 3 1 to Drogheda. So, a bit of a, a mixed bag there, but I suppose Longford Town have definitely been a mixed bag too, Kieran. Yeah, but I think if you look at that Galway result, obviously Galway had the bounce of John Caulfield coming in. That often happens with first time managers as the players take the knee here at Bishopsgate. But uh, the other result, Drogheda the other night, UCD did miss a late penalty in the game. It would have been 2 2 only for that. Um, but then Drogheda go on and get a late winner, 3 1. So it looks convincing on the score line but it really wasn't don't make any qual uh, qualms about here this is going to be a really tough game for Longford tonight it certainly is and you could say that Longford's uh, title chances are slim as they stand with only six round of matches to go but of course uh, a victory here for Longford Town tonight is essential if they are to retain the slim title hopes uh, yeah, I know we were having a chat about it before we started streaming here, but for, for me the title has gone, particularly with the goal difference, uh, I think it's all about uh, just cementing the place in the playoffs now, and for me, if you're going to win through the playoffs, I've always found historically down the years, you have to be carrying form into them playoff games, you'd want to be winning your last three or four games in the league going into the playoffs to have any real chance of going up, so uh, Longford need to start finding a bit of form, personally here tonight, I'd be happy with a point against UCD, just to try and stop the rot after that result against Bray, but uh, let's see if the players are going to be a bit more ambitious than myself tonight. Well, Dean Byrne tries to play into Adam Evans but it's uh, Michael Gallagher who can play right midfield but he's uh, uh, well he's gone into right back there but uh, he uh, has to settle for concession of a throw there Adam Evans will take the throne for Longford Town so Longford Town have a throw in just four or five yards from the end line here and Longford finding goals hard to come by Kieran yeah, very much so. Didn't create really anything of note against where I think uh, Longford only had one, maybe two shots on targets and they were just uh, little dribblers um, overall. I did notice though the warm-up here, there was um, a very noticeable step up in the tempo. They were doing some really high uh, tempo warm-ups. They don't usually do that. So uh, I think the coach and staff, they're looking to spark a bit of life, probably look for a good start to this game. And uh, let's see if, if that change in the, the pre-match ritual has any effect. Elworthy there, just getting on the end of a cross from Evans. It'll fall to Zambra. He dinks it over the top. Dean Burns got in behind here. He's inside the area. He'll probably have to look for a cross. He dinks inside, goes back inside, and he's won an early corner for Longford. He certainly has, and that's encouraging play for Longford Town. The problem with Longford Town, of course, is that they haven't put in a 90-minute display all season, Kieran. Yeah, that has been the huge issue, Tony. There's um, been really good first-half performances here against Wexford. The first half uh, against Strata was really good, uh, and we, we mentioned it going into the Bray game. We were hoping to see a 90-minute performance. In truth, we didn't even get a 15-minute performance in Bray, so let's hope they've uh, saved it for tonight. Zambra whips it in. Could be a chance for it. Durbin at the back post. There's Mick McDonald. Oh, and it's just wide of the near post. Really good set piece from Longford Town yeah and I really thought that was going in but it just tailed left at the last moment and ended up just uh, missing uh, the left hand post with the keeper Healy well beaten if that was on target that was in but I have to say a good play there by uh, Dylan Hand from Dean Zambra's corner knocking it back and Mick McDonald coming oh so close yeah he was just on the stretch there Mick McDonald it was slightly behind him he's trying to use all his neck muscles to get a bit of power in it and, and get it into that uh, top corner but unfortunately for him he's just on the stretch a little too much and it goes wide but a, a good encouraging start for Longford and maybe some uh, some high balls into that UCD area maybe they can be uh, a bit of a threat for Longford tonight not normally their natural game but maybe they've just found a little chink in the armour of UCD early on and a good pull there by Liam Kerrigan he finds Yo-Yo Mahadi and uh, Yo-Yo Mahadi uh, plays it to Colin Wheel and Colin Wheel back heels it tries to play it across to a colleague and he succeeds and it comes back out now to Gallagher who plays it back to Wheel and that's poor from Wheel and it's uh, easily cleared by Joe Manley and Longford Town will try and break here now as Sam Verdon plays that from centre to right Shane Elworthy with a long punt forward but there's no Longford Town player there and Harry McAvoy in the back three there just nods it back to the keeper Healy and UCD can build from the back and it's Jack Keeney the captain playing it back there and it comes out to uh, Harry McAvoy on the right side so Harry McAvoy is a right back and Josh Collins in the centre of the back three and then you have Luke Bohr is the left side of the back trio for UCD it's UCD try and launch an attack and that's a good ball from Keeney the captain but uh, it looks like it's over hit there Mick McDonald will get back and he just on the swivel clears that danger and eventually goes out for a throw in to UCD but halfway inside the Longford half and it goes back to Bohr and Bohr plays it across to Josh Collins Josh Collins switches from centre to the right to 
Harry McAvoy. And Harry McAvoy will switch diagonal ball from right to left. It's knocked down back here to Yo-Yo Mahadi. Takes control of the ball, turns, is looking for an option. It's a deflection. Comes to A. Durvin and A. Durvin a poor ball. But well done by Dean Byrne who managed to hold possession for Longford Town. Just slow it down. But that's on the hit again. A couple of under hit passes already from Longford Town, Kieran. Yeah, and you can't afford to do them in that area of the pitch, Tony, because we've mentioned them already. Maddie, uh, Whelan, Car uh, Keeney, they've all got lots of pace, so if you play an under-hit square ball like that, you're asking for trouble. You're asking for UCD to, to pounce on it in a very dangerous area of the pitch. So Longford, they just need to take care with that pass, and hopefully we'll, we'll put that down to a bit of early rustiness here in the game. Yes, and uh, Longford Town need to get a win. Well, a win is crucial for both sides here tonight, Kieran, if they are to retain any lingering uh, title hopes. Of course, you have Bray on 26 points, you have Drogheda 24, Cabin Teeley 23, then you've UCD and Longford in 20, Cove and Galway on 17, as that is played down but easily cleared by hand, and it goes out for throwing to UCD, and it'll be taken by Michael Gallagher, who can play right back and right midfield is kind of like a right wing back this evening and that's launched down by Joe Manley towards his brother Rob Manley but Harry McAvoy uh, sorry Josh Collins will uh, clear the danger back to his keeper Lorcan Healy and Lorcan Healy just controls the ball with his uh, the heel of his foot and then clears it up field and Colin Whelan heads that on into no man's land and that's uh, played back to Longford Town keeper Lee Stacey by Joe Manley who launches it towards the right down to Sam Verdon Sam Verdon uh, wins that throw on there and Longford Town uh, and Longford Town on the attack again here now as it's Rob Manley and Rob Manley well, that uh, comes to Dean Zambi, dinks it over towards Sam Verdon. Is he fouled? No, he's not. Luke Ball gets away with that. It's thrown to Longford Town. And uh, Shane Elworthy will go across to take this now. Halfway inside, the opposition half comes back to Shane Elworthy from Zambra. He hits it through to Zam Verdon. Sam Verdon down the right. He plays it back to Shane Elworthy. Whips that in towards Manley, to Rob Manley. But it's cleared by Josh Collins in the back there for UCD. And UCD might try and come away with this ball here now as it's uh, Mark Dignam. And uh, he plays that for to Liam Kerrigan. And Kerrigan storming by Dee Zamber, but it is Joe Manley who comes to rescue Longford Town. Places Dean Byrne inside the centre circle, just inside the Longford Town half. He's looking for options. It's back to Joe Manley. Joe Manley turns and then goes forward again, creating space for himself. And he plays it to Mick McDonald. Mick McDonald looking for the option there, but it's uh, deflected off Yo Yo Mahdi and uh, it's a throw in to Longford Town. Yeah, that was an absolutely fantastic tackle there from uh, Joe Manley. And we mentioned the performance in Bray it wasn't great but uh, one of the players that did come out with that game with credit was Joe Manley he was one of the better players on the pitch for Longford he's been, he's been really good this season you can never question his, his work rate it must run in the blood there because the two Manleys they never stop running the two of them and that was a, a really important tackle there uh, from Joe Manley it certainly was, and it's Sam Verdon with possession of the ball, but uh, it goes out for a Longford Town throw-in, and that's about halfway inside the Longford Town half. So Longford Town trying to bounce back from that 3-0 defeat to Bray. Although they were scoreless at half-time, I wasn't at the game, Kieran, but I was following it, and Bray had hit the crossbar, hit the woodwork, had a shot yeah. cleared off the line, so they definitely seemingly deserved their victory. Yeah, I spoke to Gaz Cronin after the game, and uh, he was pulling his hair out at half-time. He said they really should have been three or four up, particularly just before the break. Callum Thompson one-on-one -on -one with the keeper and he blasts it over the bar from, from a tight angle but he probably should have been at least hitting the target and you went in as a Longford fan at the break that night thinking okay Brave played really well we haven't played well we can't play any worse in the second half maybe we'll get a chance from a set piece or something and, and we'll punish them for those missed chances but it just never happened Longford conceded really early in the start of the second half that's become a, a developing trend in recent games as well so uh, the concentration tonight needs to be absolutely spot on from the town certainly does and Michael Gallagher just shepherds that uh, sorry not Michael Gallagher Harry McAvoy shepherds that out for a throw into UCD and Harry McAvoy will launch this down the wing and Again, Joe Manley yeah. with a good head there Yo Yo Maddy just trying to get in front of him but you can already see it developing down in front of us here Michael Gallery is playing really really high as you said a right wing back but he's more, more, more playing like a winger at the moment and uh, he's given Adam Evans lots to think about Evans hasn't really been able to get involved in the game because he's, he's having to sit back defensively at the moment he certainly is, and it's now with uh, Kerrigan, and he plays it back to uh, Jack Keeney, and Jack Keeney switches it to uh, Luke Bohr, and Luke Bohr plays it back to the keeper, Lorcan Healy, and Lorcan Healy switches that out to Harry McAvoy, the right uh, side of that uh, back three for UCD to Kerrigan. Poor touch by Kerrigan, Sam Verdon will come to this, and he knocks that back to Joe Manley, 
but uh, several players from both teams seem to be under hitting the ball. And a lot of loose touches and missed touches from players. So um, an important. And there's another one. Yeah, for an important period in the game here because you just get the feeling if there's going to be a goal, it's probably going to come from a mistake. And from a Longford point of view, you don't want to make that early mistake because that'll uh, hit confidence very hard. But uh, we're about nine and a half minutes into the game here, and it's UCD seeing all of the football. It certainly is, and uh, you see are trying to build from the back again. It's now with Harry McAvoy. Harry McAvoy just to the outside of his right boot, and then he hit back heels it back, and he plays uh, that then to uh, Mark Dignam, and it comes back. That's Kerrigan there, and Kerrigan coming back deep to help out with uh, intercepting that ball there, and it's played from the back again, but that's into no man's land, and Dylan Hand for Longford Town should clear the danger here. Whips that down down the wing. It's chested by Rob Manley to Dean Byrne. Dean Byrne turns back inside, plays it across to Mick McDonnell, and he's in eight acres of space here. He'll probably play it to Dean Zamber, a short pass to Zamber. As Kerrigan comes over to him, and uh, Sam Verdon lets that go, but a uh, good uh, try, but well intercepted there by Jack Keeney, the captain. Just struggling to hold on to possession here at the at the moment, Tony. Yo-Yo Maddy fouled off the ball. Referee waves advantage. It comes to the feet of Colin Whelan. He tries to lay it off, but Dean Byrne, who's playing very, very deep at the moment, you'd almost think he's a defensive midfielder. Uh, good footwork there from Dylan Hand, and Verdon, has he won the free kick? Indeed he has. So uh, Longford Town can build from this free kick now, Sam Verdon being clipped just about 10 yards inside the Longford Town half and the referee is uh, speaking to uh, Joe Manley there and the referee tonight is Alan Patchell. Yeah, I think it was Manley that maybe made the foul on Mari off the ball there. So just a little warning, a uh, good referee in there letting it go. But uh, it's quite noticeable already. There's a few tweaks in the system here from Longford tonight. The two holding midfielders, uh, Dervin and Zamber, they are sitting very, very, very tight to the back four. They're almost defending as a back six at times. The wing backs aren't going forward as much. Only and when Sam we Burnham have possession. And tries to play that ball in to Manley and he shoots Ooh. and oh good save by Healy with his foot there and it's a corner for Longford Town a, a quick fast uh, counter attack there for Longford yeah, Town yeah as I was saying there before we broke away for the, for the shot from Manley the full backs seem to be picking their moments better tonight they're not uh, sitting high up as much only when Longford get the ball and they feel there's an opportunity to get in behind UCD then they're taking the chance and going forward it seems to be a more measured approach from Longford you just wonder whether they'll see enough of the ball though uh, doing this and it's a corner to Longford Town now from the right hand side and uh, there are five Longford Town players in the box there and it's this play shot to Rob Manley and Rob Manley doesn't get enough purchase on that and he sort of missed kicked that and it goes wide for a goal kick good idea but the execution yeah. didn't come off uh, Longford fans seemed and uh, the, the, the coaching staff on the sidelines seemed to think maybe that got a nick might have been a corner but um, no, no harm to see Longford trying to mix things up there uh, low ball in from Adam Evans uh, Rob Manley I think he probably would like, to, if he had a chance again, maybe just to try and get a shot away there. But he seems to try and play a clever little intricate pass. Doesn't come off, but uh, no harm from Longford. It'll keep UCD on their toes for the next one. Certainly will. And uh, Adam Evans uh, taking the corner there. He doesn't usually take the corners, but uh, he took it there. And UCD launched that forward, but that's easy food and drink for Longford Town what do you think but McDonnell miss kicks the ball but it hits off the UCD play and goes out so fortunate there for Longford Town you'll Town. get nothing easy with Yo-Yo Maddy up there he's after running uh, about 15 yards from, from one side to the other just to go over and press that ball and he's uh, he's forced uh, Mick McDonnell just to do a bit of defending luckily though it did come off Maddy last so throw for Longford Elworthy flicks it down the line headed up in the air by Sam Verdon Rob Manley challenges but again it breaks the way of UCD and they can set a move into action but they give it away it's Whip Manley now will he go on one of his classic driving runs up the line indeed he will can he win something he wins a throw good player from the centre forward there for Longford certainly is a good player there or certainly was and Longford Town beginning to get a bit more uh, possession of the football which is badly needed because UCD had a lot of possession there up until a few minutes ago so now Longford Town uh, on the attack and Rob Manley surrounded by two UCD players Mark Dignam and uh, Luke Ball cleared it in the end and UCD well it's Ball again launches that forward towards Colin Whelan and Hand wins that he gets ahead of down to a Durvin as Kerrigan goes flying on the seat of his pants there <laughs> and gets up and uh, Mick McDonald gives that it's possession a cheap ball away from a cheap ball but a, a Durvin wins it back and plays a brilliant cross low cross field ball to Byrne who tries to feed Adams but it's a comfortable play from Michael Geller knocking it back to his goalkeeper and now it's with Mick McDonald again to a Durvin 
And A. Dervin plays it back to McDonnell as he was under pressure there from Mark. Dignan. There seems to be a policy here. The moment A. Dervin gets possession, there seems to be UCD players flying in to press him. So I wonder if that's something they've highlighted, trying to win the ball high up uh, up the pitch off one of the holding midfield players. They seem to be really interested in trying to, to nick it off Dervin here. And it's uh, Kerrigan possession and he finds the uh, Michael Gallagher there and, and wins a throw-in. And it's going to be Harry McAvoy to take this. Just about eight, nine yards inside UCD's own half here. Because when these two sides met just after the resumption, after that long layoff due to COVID-19 restrictions, it finished in a draw between UCD and Longford Town. How will it pan out tonight? It's Evans latches on to that. Good ball from Joe Mandy. He's oceans his time and space. It's a low ball in. Well, that is cleared by Josh Collins. And uh, UCD can launch a counter-attack with Mahadi and Whelan up front. Mahadi inside his own half. Plays that ball to Mark Dignam. Mark Dig uh, Dignam back to Kearney. And Kearney switches wings there. And uh, it looks like that's Evan Weir in possession of the ball there. And uh, it is Evan Weir. And he wins a throw in. And uh, Evan Weir just looking for options there. And he has it there with Mahadi back to Weir. Good turn from left to right there. And oceans of space. But that's a poor cross from Evan Weir. And a good promising move comes to North. Poor delivery. Yeah, I think it's gone out for a throw in though and immediately there the UCD defenders they're telling the four players to squeeze Longford in they want to try and box them into this corner so Longford just have to be careful what they what they do with this throw in it's Adam Evans who's going to take it and that's a good play from Dylan Hand there just and lays it's it off by the Longford Town defence but that's headed back by Jack Kearney to Yo-Yo Madity off his head and back to Lee Stacey the Longford Town goalkeeper just uh, looking at the UCD formation they have two up front you have Yo-Yo Mahadi and uh, Colin Whelan with the other striker Liam Kerrigan actually behind the front two so Kerrigan in the hole behind the uh, duo strike force of Mahadi and Colin Whelan yeah Mahadi does seem to have more of a free role though he is uh, drifting all over the, the central or across the front forward three there for, for UCD so he's uh, got more of a free role I think uh, Whelan is expected more to kind of sit in the, the centre there and, and be the focal point for them so we'll keep an eye on how that develops and he well. has been he's uh, strung together a few nice little passes creating opportunities for UCD and then you have Jack uh, Kearney the captain and uh, Mark Dignam as well getting into the front with some good passes especially some very good crossfield balls from uh, Dignam Kieran yeah Longford just really struggling to string three or four passes together at the moment Tony UCD aren't giving them anything easy and they'll have to restart from the back and that's a slice clearance, uh, clearance good pressure there from Rob Manley and Evans has picked the ball up there good quick thinking from Evans and he starts a move for Longford a little bit of a loose touch there from Manley should be a throw into Longford indeed it is and Evans again with a quick one looking for Rob Manley who's making himself open time after time but that's not his best pass of the season he gives possession away good battle here between Whelan and Joe Manley and Joe Manley's done well there to turn over possession here's Adam Evans he finds A. Dervin he might have to go all the way back indeed he does to Mick McDonnell and now with Dylan Hand and Dylan Hand not for the first time tonight he's given that away cheaply he certainly has and Evan Ware just gets possession that plays it back to Luke Bohr Luke Bohr just puts his foot on the ball and he back heels it and he plays it all the way back to the keeper Healy and uh, Healy will probably just launch this down to the wing here and it's uh, down to Michael Gallo who heads it on but wasn't Kerrigan a bad pick out there from the goalkeeper Kerrigan just Kerrigan slightly over hit let's see what Lee Stacey can do his turn to, to show off his distribution skills he's going to launch this up towards Evans and that might not be a bad ball and Evans probably should have done better with that really good ball from Lee Stacey he let it bounce and he, he lost, lost control of the ball and miscalculated when he let it bounce probably should have gone on to the ball and taken it down would have been the better option but uh, Harry McAvoy here playing oh, oh, under, nutmeg. under Evans legs the nutmeg there through Evans legs and to Gallagher Gara to uh, Kerrigan who was very very deep back helping out defence there comes Luke Ball he switches out to Evan Weir Evan Weir he gets the better of the Longford Town play Shane Elworthy and it's back to Bourne Ball and dinks that forward to Mahardy but uh, Mick McDonald will run back towards the ball there and play comfortably back to Lee Stacey as Colin Whelan comes in to put him under pressure and I suppose Stacey might have seen him in the white of his eyes uh, hurried his kick and out for a throw on unfortunately to UCD yeah we'll put that one down to commentators car so we we're just praising his, his kick in there a moment ago but he sliced that one out for a throw in but not a lot of quality on show so far in this opening 18 and a half minutes both teams struggling to get 
uh, some fluid passing football uh, going. But at the moment, I think UCD probably just in the, the possession stakes, but in saying that, they haven't created anything of note just yet. And here's Kerrigan, chests it down. He plays it out on the right to Gallagher. And Gallagher, low ball back towards the edge of the box. And Dean Burns steps, but well. recovers well. <laughs> and Joe Manley will clear the danger, trying to find his brother Rob Manley. But Harry McAvoy does well to win that back. Josh Collins plays it to the Captain Kearney. And uh, uh, Keeney uh, plays it back across the ball, back to Josh Collins. So Jack Keeney, the captain of the UCD team. Uh, Dean Zamber, the captain of the Longford Town team. Uh, just going back to that incident there with uh, Dean Byrne a minute ago. Again, you'll notice he was winning possession on the edge of his own area. He's having to come very deep. I wonder if someone would be better served just to tell him to stay a little bit higher up the pitch to try and be a bit more selfish as the ball is aimed up towards him here. And Gallagher was under pressure from Adam Evans, but it's cleared away. Here's Joe Manley. He's had uh, nearly as many touches as any player on the pitch here in the opening 20 minutes. He goes inside to A. Durvin, who's again... Harried here by Yo-Yo Maddy, but a good spin there from Durvin, and oh, not his best ball at all, Durvin. He gives it away, Maddy collects, and UCD can break now with Kerrigan. And Kerrigan on the ball in possession, plays it to the right to the overlapping Michael Gallagher, and he whips that ball into the uh, penalty spot, but well cleared by Mick McDonald. The only uh, player for UCD in the box was Whelan, so not too much support there, and Although UCD have had more of the possession and more of the ball, Longford Town have had the best chance of the match with that manly effort that was saved by Healy, Kieran. Yeah, and obviously the, the, the missed header from Mick McDonald as well. But in terms of That's open right, play, in terms of to keep it beaten too. Yeah, I think in terms of open play, it's been it's been fairly level so far. That was a really good cross there from Gallagher. There was just uh, as you mentioned, only one UCD player in the box, so they'd be disappointed from that. But an example of what Gallagher can do when he gets forward. And Evan Weir's gone across to take this corner from the right, and everyone inside the six-yard box. And it's whipped in towards the back post, clears everyone's head and harmlessly goes out for a goal kick to a Longford Town. At least Stacey will take this. That was an interesting tactic from UCD. Everyone in the UCD team that was inside the Longford box was in the six-yard box. Yeah, no, if that was a better ball there from Mick McDonald, Longford could have been in. Rob Manley just seemed to, he seemed to have a, a run on the back four there. There was plenty of green grass to run into as well. It just needed to be a bit, a bit floatier, that ball in behind, and give him a chance to run onto it. But again, so far, Rob Manley having to work off scraps here in the opening quarter. He certainly has uh, worked off scraps. Adam Evans wins that header. But uh, it's eventually cleared by Gallagher, and it's now back with Longford Town as Zamba plays it to Joe Manley, who's advancing forward from his uh, defensive position. He has possession of the ball, plays it back to Dean Byrne, halfway inside the UCD half. Instead of going forward, he's forced back to Hand, and Hand just opens his body and slides that ball across to keep Lee Stacey on the edge of his 18-yard box and he whips that uh, down the centre but uh, nobody's going to get that although Adam Evans gave up hope maybe if he got out of the starting blocks he might have had a chance but probably not of getting to that long clearance by Stacey it's Harry McAvoy has the ball now he receives a, a short pass from the keeper and it's across to Michael Gallagher and Michael Gallagher whips that uh, towards uh, Mahadi but it's uh, cleared by the Longford Town defence and Sam Verdon with the ponytail this evening Plays that back to Elworthy outside his right boot to Rob Manley. Rob Manley under pressure from Dignam. He plays it back and uh, A. Durvin is forced all the way back to keep it Lee Stacey by Liam Kerrigan. Good uh, Harry in there from Kerrigan. The UCD striker is playing in the hole behind the front two of Whelan and Mahadi. Well, as you say, Kieran Mahadi with a sort of a roving role in that mm. front two. The, there, was a, there was a cry of forward there from some of the fans in, in the main stand. Great to have them back tonight. But uh, in fairness to UCD, they're not giving long for the opportunity to play forward passes as soon as they receive it as I've touched on the midfield players they've been forced straight back yeah. so uh, it's been a really frustrating game for Longford in the opening 22 they have to be careful with them passes I know the fans want to see them try and get a forward but you don't want to just play aimless balls forward you have to be very careful when you're going back obviously that you get the passes right because if you under hit one you could be sending and in someone with, like Maddie or Whelan yeah and with the likes of the captain Keeney and Dignam and Kerrigan snapping at yeah. the Longford heels when those balls are under hit that could be dangerous if Longford don't get more purchase on their passing it's now with Sam Thurden on the right he plays it to Shane Elworthy and again oh, having to go back nearly intercepted by yeah. Kerrigan but uh, Mick McDonald plays it back to Stacey and Stacey just uh, slows it down and a little dink over Mahadi to Joe Manley that was very skillful probably the most skillful pass we've seen on display <laughs> and that coming from the Longford Town keeper Lee Stacey there as it comes across to McDonald. McDonald rolls it forward and launches that towards Rob Manley 
but the keeper comes out and acts a sweeper there and gathers the ball, Healy, and he's, is he going to launch it longer? Is he going to play it short across to Harry McAvoy on the, the right? Well, he goes to and then changes his mind and instead uh, plays it out to the wing here. And it's uh, Evan Bohr and it's uh, back with Keeney to the keeper at Healy so yeah. not a lot of quality the last no. home game between Longford and Drogheda had far more quality Kieran. yeah very much so uh, of course if you're playing in goals for UCD you have to be good with your feet and uh, Lorcan Healy he was very impressive in terms of how he commanded his area and he was very good under a high ball in the nil-nil draw earlier on the season and uh, that was a good bit of sweeping we've seen a couple of moments ago when he timed uh, the run off his line perfectly to come out and intercept uh, the ball that was aimed up for Rob Manley but uh, he looks a good young goalkeeper, I have to say, Lorcan Healy. He certainly does. And, of course, UCD have this conveyor belt of talent coming through season after season. Imagine if they didn't have to sell their players to bigger clubs. Unbelievable. You They'd be the best team in the country. I'm sure the, the people listening at home don't need us to start reeling off names. They know all the names yeah. that have played for UCD. A lot of them have ended up with them talk, funny enough, down the years. Um, but there's, there's a few potential gems and p potential stars in this team. And I think everyone thought this season would be tran a transition year for UCD. Not at all. They're, they're banging the mix. And Keeney plays that across to Bohr, and Bohr plays it to Dignam, who turns, gets the better of Sam Verdon, but then he loses to A. Durvin, but A. Durvin is a judge to have fouled, and A. Durvin is, uh, is it four yellow cards, he's at least three yellow cards so far, so he's going to be a booking away from uh, a suspension. Of course, Longford Town's next match is the El Clasico against Athlone Town in the Athlone Town mm. Stadium. This coming Friday, Kieran. Yeah, and this result here tonight is gonna it, it's gonna set the, the tempo up for in terms of how Longford approach that game. If if they get a win here tonight, they'll be going into that game against that loan full of confidence. They haven't lost in their last 16 meetings with that loan. But if Longford get a negative result here tonight, there's just all always that little bit of doubt. At loan have uh, recently won their first game of the season, their first win since July 2019. So there's a bit of confidence in the At Lone camp at the minute. So could be a tricky trip to to Lizzie Woolen on Friday uh, Longford really need a good uh, performance and a good result to carry into that game yeah Longford Town in recent years have always seemed to have the better of Athlone Town here at Bishop's Gate but uh, can struggle at times away to Athlone at the Athlone Town Stadium as again Whelan snaps at the heels of Manley he's forced to play it back and uh, Yo-Yo Mahadi snaps at Hans heels and it forces an error and a throw into UCD so plenty of high pressing from the UCD players Garen and it's McAvoy, well, he's going to take the throne, but he's too lazy to get that ball. He waits for Josh Collins to kick it back to him. And now he has possession of the ball and to take the throne just five yards or three yards inside his own half. Plays it to Josh Keeney. Josh Keeney back to Collins. Collins puts his foot on the ball. He's looking for options and he plays it back. A lot of ball going back to the keepers, Kieran. Yeah, on both sides. Uh a lot of pressure in terms of the ball, um, both teams, and it, it, it's showing here. No one's really had time to breathe and get their foot on the ball, and we would probably have expected a bit more quality from UCD. We haven't really seen it. As I said, they, ha they are just slightly shade in the possession stakes at the moment, but um, from a Longford point of view, defensively, you're happy enough with what you're seeing. They're not allowing UCD any uh, chance to get a few moves together. There's, there's no real link-up play out there as such, but uh, from a Longford point of view, you want to see Longford get it down and, and try and show a bit of their quality too. And the only two chances of the match, both good chances for him to Longford. You mentioned there Mick McDonald, the header just uh, uh, tailed left from uh, Dylan Hands, header across goal from Zamba's corner. And then Rob Manley with the effort that was saved by Healy. As Sam Verdon plays that out to Elworth, he tries to find Rob Manley, but that's cleared by Collins. And Sam Verdon is a judge to have committed a foul there, and it's a free kick to the students and uh, they were just slow proceedings down as Locke and Healy comes up to take this free kick for UCD and we've played 27 minutes of uh, a lacklustre contest Kieran. Yeah Verdon was just winding up for a shot there Tony um, but a slightly loose touch and he pulls his man back so a foul and again we've been speaking about Healy that's a really good effort from him unfortunately for him it's just uh, eluded Michael Gallagher that one but Longford need to keep an eye on Gallagher he's playing very very high up the pitch and he's picking up little pockets there in the final third of the pitch so if he had got on that ball it would have been another chance for him to, to show his quality in terms of getting across into the area so Evans just needs to, to stay switched on he hasn't allowed Gallagher too much time uh, on the ball up there so far and he needs to, to keep that going he certainly does, and it's uh, cleared by the head of Rob Manley, but UCD have... Oh, well done, A. Eh? Durvin. He dispossesses Harry McAvoy, but there's no support, so will he hold it up? We'll just rampage on that. Oh, Great back heel from Durvin to Dean Byrne. Dean Byrne, the outside of his foot to Zamba. Zamba to Rob Manley, 25 yards out to oh. his and Sam Vernon, but plays at the wrong side of him, and Josh Collins is able to just allow that ball to go to the keeper. If he played at the other side, he was in. 
best passing move of the game from either side. Really good break, uh, counter attack and play there from Longford. And you probably want to see your centre forward been a little bit more selfish there, Tony. Probably could have taken a shot on, as you said, he could have gone out to the right hand side either. He had an, over, an overlapping player over there, but he makes the wrong decision. The move just breaks down at the crucial point. But positive stuff from Longford there, and that was all started by some really good play from A. Durvin. It certainly was, and. Uh that is a ball forward by uh, Keeney, but it's uh, shepherded out for a goal kick to Longford Town. But Good. Keeney and Dignam have, have pulled a few good passes together, yeah. and yet UCD, despite their possession, haven't created any real chances, Kieran. No, but a really good piece of defending there from Adam Evans. He's tracked. He, he was probably starting five yards behind Michael Gallagher there. He had a lot of ground to make up, but he shows his pace. He gets alongside Gallagher, and then he bustles him out of the way and out for a goal kick. Really good defensive, selfish play. Oh, brilliant by Durvin goes around three UCD players, including Michael Gallagher. Comes back in from left to centre, plays it to Dean Byrne. In a central position, out to Sam Verdon. He turns his body and tries to shred that ball in towards the box on the right towards Elworthy but it goes out for a goal kick but a good idea good creativity by Longford just didn't pan out with the final ball yeah and I think Alan Patchell's just going to have a word with one of the UCD players here uh, had a little tug on the shirt there of A. Durvin he's broke through that's the second little break we've seen from Durvin in the last couple of minutes Longford need to get him on the ball more and let him break forward and just to mention that the referee uh, there's a change of referee Alan Patchell was supposed to be in the middle but it's uh, Derek Toomey who's uh, refereeing instead so a very late late change of the man in the middle as uh, Ig Durvin with his terrific engine wins that plays it back to Manley that's Joe Manley cross to Hand Hand plays that to McDonnell McDonald. Just a little bit of uh, Towner picking up the tempo a little bit here, Tony. Good ball in behind there again. Elworthy getting forward a lot more now, so there's some positive signs from Longford in the last couple of minutes. But Healy doing well with that sweeping roll to keeper for UCD, and again, is uh, worked out for UCD and him racing off his line, acting a sweeper there, saving a potential good goal opportunity for Longford Town. But again, flag gone, has gone up, and it's a goal kick, sorry, a free kick for UCD to be taken by Locke and Healy. He's about seven or eight yards outside his 18 yard box and a uh, little dink towards that looks like is it Liam Kerrigan it is uh, Kerrigan he chests it down but he's forced back and he's still forced back but he back heels it uh, by uh, the Longford Town player and that was a Durvin who's all the way out the right and eventually good play by Durvin but it goes for throwing to uh, UCD and it's played to Colin Whelan who's on the left side of the 18 yard box plays that back to Kerrigan and Kerrigan just holding possession up there and he cuts back inside and now accelerates and fires a shot from 30 yards out but that's well wide here yeah well that's a good sign defensively for Longford it means they're frustrating UCD taking on pop shots like that there was an uh, absolutely no chance of that one going in so Longford will take that all night but I don't think it's just here at Bishopsgate we're seeing a lack of quality Tony because there's absolutely no goals to report anywhere in the division at the moment <laughs> so well it doesn't necessarily mean there's a lack of quality elsewhere uh, there still could be good games but this one definitely is not a good game very poor to watch to say the least now it's uh, UCD with the head of uh, Harry McAvoy slices off I think it's still in hands yeah. foot and goes out for a corner and that was poor defending had a bit of time to bring it down and just uh, clear it properly but it goes out for a corner for UCD and uh, UCD will they put all the players in the six yard box again like they did at the last corner is it Evan Weir going across to take this corner it looks like it is Evan Weir indeed it is and Evan Weir going across coming from the opposite wing to take this right uh, uh, sided corner here for UCD so a bit of a change up in tactics is it no they're all in the six yard box uh, yeah again. they've got two on the edge of the box so they haven't just committed as many to the six yard box this time Longford have to be careful if it breaks and it comes back to Weir and he launches a ball towards the back stick. It's knocked across there and Galler heads that on to Yo-Yo uh, Yo yeah. Mahdi who uh, flick heads it over the crossbar. Good chance there for UCD. Yeah, as I mentioned, Longford, when, when UCD are committing that many four uh, that many four for a set piece, you do have to be careful. You might defend the initial cross, but it's all, often the second phase that will catch you out just as the back four is pushing out. So uh, that almost happened there with Mahdi getting his head on the ball. But a lack of quality in the first division tonight, maybe. Definitely not a talent. Shamrock Rovers 5, Waterford nil is a scoreline after 62 minutes. It seems John Sheridan a bigger loss than we thought. <laughs> As it comes to Rob Money, the edge of the box, he, he feigns to shoot and runs inside the box, turns inside, Collins and then shoots! But he doesn't get enough purchase on the shot and it's gathered at the second attempt by Healy. You're saying uh, uh, not poor quality Tallis Stadium. Well, obviously there is from Waterford. 
Yeah, and uh, maybe a lack of quality finishing there from Rob Manley. Not what we've come to expect of him. He's uh, he's hit off his, his weaker left foot, but he hasn't got a clean contact. He's he's almost fallen over as he hits it, and it's it's an easy save for, for Healy. But that was a let off for UCD, and again Manley's going to chase this one into the corner. But Healy again, not for the first time tonight. Really good off that line. And it's cleared by Healy for a, a Longford Town throw in. No, the, the flag has gone up, Tony. Oh, it looks like he's flagged uh, against Rob Manley. I, th I think that looks quite harsh to me, uh, particularly when he, he wasn't anywhere near the ball. He hasn't really had an impact on, on Healy kicking that ball out for, for a throw in. But uh, the linesman over the far side feels uh, the offside flag had to go up, and that's what's happened. So, free kick here to UCD. Well, I, I would agree to disagree with the linesman's decision in that instance as Healy gathers the ball and he brings it back in. It looks like Healy is going to take this free kick. As Josh Collins goes over, but uh, Healy doesn't uh, play to him. He's still holding the ball. Now he puts it on the deck, and now he launches it from uh, right to left. But that's poor, and it goes straight to Lee Stacey, the Longford Town goalkeeper. And Lee Stacey gathers the ball, and he launches one forward. But that's going to just find Harry McAvoy, who volleys it to uh, Dignam, and Dignam plays it back to Harry McAvoy and it's just inside well just to the right of the 18 yard box back to Healy and Healy launches it nearly got me left and me right mixed up there and it's cleared by Longford Town to Dean Byrne Dean Byrne turns inside Keeney but it's Harry McAvoy intercepts but it's, uh, back with Dervin Sam Verdon lets it run by him but there's nobody there for Longford Town now Liam Kerrigan who's back deep inside his own half helping out plays it to the overlapping Evan Weir by the looks of it he cuts inside and plays the ball towards Mahadi but it's just slightly over hit and that will go all the way out for a goal kick shepherded out there by Adam Evans who's been tremendous backtracking tonight he's getting forward but he's getting back when required as well yeah, I don't think we're going to see a lot of him going forward tonight, Tony, because uh, he really has a job on his hands there with Michael Gallagher, but I'm sure Darrow Doyle won't mind that at all. If, if Evans does his defensive work and does it properly, um, he's doing a big service for his team, so he let's hope he keeps that up. He certainly is, and he, he, what I like about him this evening, he's not going forward willy-nilly, he's going forward when he knows there's no danger if there's a counter-attack. Yeah, both full-backs seem to be doing that for Longford Elworthy as well. He's not glued out to that touchline, he's, he's picking his moments better, and I think that's something they've worked on after that design. And, Bray. and that has been a problem with Longford Town in some of the performances when advancing forward getting caught on the counter down either wing and now it's a, a free kick to Longford Town and Joe Manley just uh, five yards inside the UCD half Adam Evans called for it but he just uh, decides to go probably diagonal ball yes from left to right and it goes up towards Sam Verdon but it's cleared by Collins but that's Shane Elworthy is it with yeah Elworthy with a, with a half volley there hit the UCD player's arm okay but no chance that was going to here's Dean Byrne cuts inside oh. Dignam but he just gets too much under the ball and he balloons it five yards over the crossbar but a good chance Karen. yeah well that's the advantage of having a number 10 like Dean Byrne in there he'll pick up the second balls on the edge of the box that's what he done after uh, that volley fr from Ver sorry from Elworthy which as I said it did hit the player on the arm but his arm was down by his side it was in a natural position no way that was ever going to be given as a penalty but Dean Byrne in there he sniffs the danger picks up the second ball beats a man inside and tries to curl it into that top corner would have been a great goal but uh, again positive signs for Longford they're starting to grow into this second, uh, first half a little bit more they certainly are and it's uh, launched down there Mick McDonald is he fouled no referee says player and Mahdi has the ball he plays it to Dignam and Dignam cuts inside Dean Zamber but again he gets under the ball it sort of bobbles up on him and well over the crossbar yeah some good initial footwork it's probably the first time a UCD player has been able to get his head up in, in a central position close enough to the goals and get a strike away so I think Zamber and Cole will be disappointed they let him wriggle away there but uh, in the end it, it's a fairly poor shot so no danger in the end but apart from the shot, it was clever play by Dignam because yeah. he created space, dummy the Longford player, and uh, maybe he could have just, uh, he created the space, maybe he could have gone in closer before uh, offloading the shot. But uh, there there, there was a lot of bodies Stacey. around him, he's probably right to have a goal. But, uh, uh, yeah. Well, they were left or right, and there was a gap in the centre. But anyways, he did take the shot, and it went well over. It's Kerrigan has possession of the ball now, plays it to Yo-Yo Mahdi. Oh, back to Gallagher, and it hits off Durban and goes out for a throw -in, and uh, Gallagher will... Just uh, what's happening here? The referee blows. Uh, the it whistle. looks like Ed Irvin, maybe his shin pad or something has popped out, and uh, the referee is going to make him go off to. Uh 
Yeah, it's definitely the shin pad he's holding his hand. The referee is making him go off to put a shin pad back on. I have never seen anything like that in all my years watching League of Ireland. That is absolutely incredible stuff. I'd, I'd suggest if I was A, I'd get a bit of tape around that because if that happens again, uh, the referee is clearly going to do the same. That's a, a very strange bit of uh, And he forces him to go to the dog outside instead of decide to pitch you his own, which is yeah, strange. It's very strange. Uh, particularly with the new substitute rule now, the player can go off at the closest point. Right, so yeah. uh, I really don't understand why he's made him go over there, but I, I think I do actually see A with a bit of tape. Yeah, indeed he is. So that's the right thing to do. We don't want that happening again. Longford can't afford to be a man down. So Josh Collins plays it back to Bohr, and Bohr plays it from left to right towards Mahadi. Uh, Garlaher will be up there, will he? Is the flag gone up? It's offside. So yeah, it's Maddy looked yeah. offside there to me. That I'm just my view is blocked here slightly. Yeah, the, the linesman has the flag up, so offside. So free kick to Longford Town and Dylan Hand. Well, he was going to take it, but he's decided to leave it to Lee Stacey. So Lee Stacey will launch this uh, free kick down towards Rob Manley maybe down the centre Dean yeah. Byrne is getting a bit more forward he goes towards Adam Evans on the left but Michael Gallagher and Evans haven't it well done Evans he holds on to it but the flag goes up that was never out linesman I don't know what is going on down wasn't there out. that's a, a really really poor decision from, from the linesman um, just to mention <laughs> Waterford have got a goal back against Rovers 5-1 there now as they head into the last uh, 15 or 20 minutes or so but Longford back to their full contingent here now Ed Irvin back on the field but uh, a couple of very strange moments there from the match officials there certainly was indeed and it's now thrown to UCD and Harry McAvoy takes this just near his own end line here on his right side and the referee is yeah he's, he's nitpicking here, here now yeah. the referee there's a there's a, a loose ball in behind the goal it's, it's absolutely nowhere well, it's near behind the, pitch. the goal <laughs> it's nowhere near the pitch it's not going to cause anything the referee seems to think he's the centre of attention at the moment making players go off for, for loose shin pads and, and all sorts uh, really really poor stuff from the official the game has been broken up enough, enough as it is we don't need uh, little stoppages like that Kerrigan has the ball now he turns and he plays it chested down by Dean Zamber A. Durban wins that gets a better Kerrigan and ricochets off McAvoy and Rob Manley won't get there the keeper gets there first but it's a free kick to no, no it's, it's uh, I'm going to give the referee credit this time he's, uh, he's seen that he's taken that in a, in a very delicate position we'll say and uh, he's down for a bit of treatment just he put the hand forward as if to sit and then he turned and uh, asked the physio to come onto the field of play so he, he got it in a very sensitive place there obviously so uh, a very compassionate referee in there from the uh, referee, the man in the middle, uh, Derek Tommy. Yeah, the uh, the Longford captain Dean Zambra. He's uh, in conversation with the linesman here. He's uh, he's still having a go at him about that uh, earlier decision where he put the flag up. Adam Evans, absolutely brilliant work from Evans to keep that ball in. And uh, not sure what the linesman was watching. He's got a smile on his face down there. Great to see a smile on the linesman's face. But uh, he got that decision absolutely horrendously wrong. But he's only human like the rest of us. We all make mistakes, and that would be a minor mistake in the greater scheme of things if that's his only mistake for the rest of the well, game. Well, it was um, into a dangerous position, that cross from, from Evans. It was into the penalty area, so Longford could have uh, created a, a chance from us. So um, it, it was a really disappointing moment from, from the match officials down there. And A. Durvin is going off the pitch, but he's not making him go to the dugout side, the opposite side this time. Why he couldn't do that earlier <laughs> on, uh, it beats me, but I suppose he had to go over there and get the tape anyway, so... Uh, looks like Brave taking the lead. 40 minutes played. Big goal for Brave. Top of the first division at the moment. Yeah, and of course they're away to Cove Ramblers. And uh, Bray uh, leading 1-0 at St. Coleman's Park against Cove on the 40-minute mark. Course, yeah, just a, a little smile there. Uh, some of the lads in section all just mentioned something to him there. So great to have them back as well. The players love that. But uh, no ill effects is. on Aid Irvin after that. Um, that sore incident for him. But uh, yeah, Bray... Uh, producing another good display down in St. Colman's Park not an easy place to get results although UCD did put six past them not too long ago down in St. Colman's Park and it's uh, UCD Dignam takes that free kick quickly to bore across to Josh Collins Josh Collins to the, the last of the defensive trio Harry McAvoy Harry McAvoy uh, comes forward nearly loses the ball plays it to uh, Whelan and it goes back to McAvoy back to Josh Collins and Josh Collins on the edge of the eight yard box back to the keeper Luke Keeley Luke Keeley is going to launch this is he well a low ball to he called Dignan. the turf there the keeper as he, he, as he kicked it out and uh, he was lucky to get away with it but it still went to Dignam and now it's with Yo-Yo Mahadi well back inside his own half tries to play that ball to Evan Weir but he uh, overplays the pass and it goes out for a Longford Town throw and 
and Shane Elworthy will take the throne for Longford Town. So I suppose the two best chances of the half fall, falling to Longford yeah. Town. You had Michael McDonald, Dee Zambra's corner, headed back by Dylan Hand across goal. And, and Michael McDonald's headed beat the keeper Healy, but just tailed left and narrowly wide. And then you had the Rob Manley effort coming in from the right. Good yeah. low Chris shot, saved by the feet of Healy. Two best chances of the game. UCD, apart from Balloonie, a couple of chances of the crossbar from the edge of the box. Haven't Well, they had that header from Mahdi from 10 yards out. Uh, Gala headed on mm. Mahdi's header just went over the bar uh, from 8 or 9 yards out so that was a decent chance of UCD but that's all they've had really Karen. yeah um, I think it's fair to say we're looking forward to our half time cup or Tony because there, there hasn't been a lot to talk about in this first half yeah as uh, Longford Town's Shane Elworthy comes uh, forward on the right whips it across but that's bounces up onto the head of Harry McAvoy Harry McAvoy comes forward with this ball and uh, he plays it out to now, Evans now. needs to be careful here Michael Gallagher's got a run on him if he switches a far side Longford could be in trouble and Kerrigan. here comes Kerrigan oh great run by Kerrigan oh good block there is it hand that blocked that Karen? I'm not sure, uh, but I was just watching um, yeah, was Gallagher there. Hands. He was furious. He didn't get the ball. He was in absolutely oceans of space over on the far side. Evans had made, made a break forward earlier on when, when Longford were on the, the attack. But um, again, we talked about it earlier. He needs to be careful picking and choosing those moments. And Sam Verdon's left a uh, late tackle in there. And uh, that's going to be a free kick to UCD. And I think Verdon, he might be lucky if he gets away with a card here. He's getting a, a speaking to anyways. He just seemed to body check yeah. the, uh, the UCD player. I'm not sure who that is down. Is it perhaps Kerrigan? No, it looks like Dignam, I think, that's yeah. down injured there. The midfielder for UCD. The big, tall, blonde-haired player. Uh, good array of passing from Dignam. Uh, it was it. It was Dylan Hand. I've just uh, yeah, I did say that. that. It was Dylan um, Hand that blocked that I think ball. Th did he pick up the yellow card there, Sam Vernon? Yeah. So, uh, so first yellow card of the game. It hasn't been a dirty game by any accounts, Tony. Um, as we said, both teams are harry and hassling each other in terms of possession but uh good clean tackling out there that's uh, really the first kind of i suppose leaning on <laughs> leaning the other way type of tackle but uh, look yellow card not the not the end of the world for sam burden and a free kick to ucd we approach the last minute of the first half and cleared by the head of dylan hand and adam evans will he keep this in he does but he just plays it to dignam and dignam opens the body switches play out to the opposite wing there and would mahdi get that or will it be where mahdi picks it up mahdi goes by two longford town defenders plays it to dignam but a ricochet for longford town defender but it comes back to kerrigan he cuts inside but well cleared by is it shane now yeah. clears that two and minutes added on here at the end of the half oh and oh. if longford had nipped that ball away that yeah, could have been a chance ball. Oh, was caught nearly caught napping yeah. there on, on that ball but he got away with that one as it uh, looks like Dignam has possession now he plays it to Mahadi back to goal and it's cleared by A. Durvin and it comes out to Sam Verdon Sam Verdon seven or eight yards inside zone out tries to play that to Rob Manley but there's three players around him there it goes up in the air and Harry McAvoy heads that clear towards uh, Colin Whelan but oh, great defending there by Joe Manley who's been excellent tonight back to hand back to Stacey Stacey launches that the keeper down the centre but there's nobody there for Longford Town Josh Collins has it clear and yeah. A. Durvin back to Sam Verdon but he doesn't get possession of it and Dignam will switch play from uh, left to right to Gallagher Gallagher has possession of ball Adam Evans as always is beside him and he plays that ball across ball. to Jack Keeney who slips but still holds on to possession plays that ball through and it's a great goal there from Evan Weir Evan Weir comes in from the left overlap and run cuts in from the left into the box and a great pass there and he hammers the ball to the roof of the Longford Town net ah oh, what a brilliant finish from the young man but uh, it all started with the switch ball out here to Gallagher he plays a, a clever ball inside to uh, I think it was uh, Keeney or Kerrigan that picked Jack it up Keeney yeah, it, yeah Keeney and then Keeney manages just to wriggle away from A. Durvin it looked like Durvin was going to was gonna get the ball when, when Keeney just uh, threatened to lose his footing for a minute but Keeney with a brilliant uh, ball into Maddy who plays it in behind the Longford back four and what a finish that is but that is a real punch in the gut for Longford Town it's been a fairly level 45 minutes uh, I think if it had ended nil-nil at the end of the half you'd, you'd have very um, you'd find it very difficult to argue with that but as it stands UCD are going to go in here with the lead at the break yeah and Evan Weir with the finish there of course uh, playing on the left wing 
and uh, cutting inside latches onto that ball and virtually the last attack of the first half hammers it to the roof of the net past Stacey uh, nil nil would have been fair Longford Town had the two best chances of the half before that goal uh, McDonald with a header from uh, uh, from Hand's head Dean Zambler corner Hand with a header back across goal McDonald header beat uh, the uh, Healy in the UCD goals just tailed left and narrowly wide Rob Manley had a shot saved by the feet of Healy Mahadi had a header that just went over from 8-9 yards and then that goal bang on the halftime whistle Evan Weir with a cracking finish kick. yeah he made absolutely no mistake about it he almost took a the net off the goal it's a really powerful strike a, a good high drive into the top corner but uh, we spoke about it earlier in commentary Tony the fact that Longford Town it's been the start of second half that have caught them out recently they've lost concentration coming out of the dressing room well it seems their mind was already in the dressing room here they've switched off just before the break they've done loads of really good defensive work tonight but that one moment has let them down and it could be crucial now because UCD go in with a big big goal at the break and we're back for the second half at Bishop's Gate if you missed the first half UCD with a late goal right on the stroke of half time so they lead 1-0 at the break here the visitors uh, just looking around the pitch Tony doesn't seem to be any sign of changes from Longford Town at the break no there isn't any changes at the break for either side uh, looking as if they're togging out as they did at the start of the game Longford Town lining out 3-4-2-1 Lee Stacey in goals Mick McDonald Joe Manley Dylan Hand the back three Shane Elworthy and Adam Evans on the flanks Dean Zamber and A. Durvin in, in midfield uh, Sam Verdon and Dean Burns behind the striker Rob Manley for UCD they're lining out 3-4-1-2 Lorcan Healy in goals back three of Harry McAvoy Josh Collins and Luke Bohr then Michael Gallagher and Evan Weir on the two flanks with Jack Keeney and Mark Dignam in the centre midfield and Liam Kerrigan is behind the front two of Yo-Yo Mahadi and Colin Whelan with Mahadi giving us that sort of roving role yeah. in that front two I wonder if what we've just seen from the kick off there is maybe a sign of intent from Longford and their plans for this second half it was a real direct one up into the corner it was chased down into the corner by about three players including Adam Evans so our Longford going to be a little bit more direct in this second half as Dean Byrne finds the ball on the edge of the area but it falls away from his feet A. Durvin wins it back he was probably fouling the process referee says play on it's in towards Ron Manley he almost got a flick on it but there's Lorcan Healy to gather the loose ball yeah, so an encouraging start to Longford Town, who have usually struggled to get out the blocks in the opening 10 15 minutes of the second half. Mm -hmm. But uh, not a bad uh, move there for Longford Town. But Longford Town trailing by one goal to nil. Evan Weir, Sam Verdon tries to play that through to Rob Manley. It ricochets off Jack Keeney and comes back to Manley, but he, he loses possession and he tries to dispossess Keeney. And referee says, play on, and Rob Manley has the ball 20 yards out and it hits Josh Collins. And Longford Town players claim a handball. Referee says play on. And Adam Evans has possession here. He tries to get a better of Kerrigan. And it comes out to the flank here. Back to A. Durvin. Centre position. Will he switch play to try and get in Sam Verdon behind the defence? But it's just too high and goes out for a goal kick. Yeah, positive stuff from Longford. Pressing Bray into mistakes there. Rob Manley winning the ball on the edge of the area. Gets a quick shot away. It was appeals for handball, as you said. I think, again, though, the UCD player's arm seemed to be down by his side. I don't think you can give that one. Uh, big goal just uh, in the first division in the last couple of moments. Cove have equalised against Bray, so that could be a yeah, big one Char in the title race. Charlie Lyons with the equaliser for the Ramblers there, so Cove won and uh, Bray won. And uh, the other games are scoreless, I believe. Launched uh, forward now, and uh, will Longford Town win that in defence? Mick McDonald has it, and then it's cleared by hand. But it uh, comes out to UCD defence here, and they'll try and play the ball to Kerrigan. And it ricochets off, and it goes out for a throw in. And uh, Colin Whelan will take this throw in for UCD, will he? Uh, no, he decides to leave it. And it is Evan Weir, the goal scorer, who comes up to take this great, great goal, great finish. He cut mm -hmm. in from the left, created loads of space, wasn't tracked, got into the box, and cracked a, a fine shot to the roof of the Longford Town net. As Weir's cross is blocked down by Elworthy, Sam Verdon back to Elworthy. And Elworthy, oh, poor ball, really. And uh, that looks like it's a uh, ball there, and it comes out to Keeney, and Keeney dinks that ball towards the edge of the Longford Town box, cleared by the head of Joe Manley. Jack Keeney just play that ball back there to Harry McAvoy, and Harry McAvoy and it comes back to Keeney now, and Keeney uh, floats that ball towards the Longford Town box, but Lee Stacey will easily gather that one, and now he just plays it out to Lynn Hand, 
Dylan Hand on the edge of the box finds a Durban and Aiken oh. space but poor touch he loses it to Dignam tries to make up for it uh, challenges Mahadi takes a deflection and goes out off Durban for a throw in to UCD so just uh, a bit uh, sluggish on the ball there yeah and already a few supporters here are not happy they're, they're voicing fr frustrations early on in this second half I think they felt maybe Dean Byrne could have tried a little bit harder to get on the end of that ball but you have to remember Dean Byrne's coming back from a long long layoff I'm sure he's given it everything he's got out there but as you said there's just a lack of quality from Longford at the start of this second half really frustrating stuff yeah, Dean Byrne has only made five appearances this yeah. year, Kieran. So uh, before tonight, so this is a sixth appearance, and some of them have been substitute appearances. So it's going to probably take him. I know there's only a handful of matches left, but it's probably another fortnight before you see Dean Byrne back to 100% sharpness. Yeah, and chasing down and, and, and forcing mistakes in terms of opposition, that's not Dean Byrne's game. He likes getting the ball into his feet and facing up a man and taking him on, getting shots and crosses away. Um, so you can understand why maybe he wasn't fully committed to that tackle. Now it's a goal kick to Longford Town, taken short by Stacey to Hand, and Hand brings it to the edge of the 18-yard box, and that's intercepted yes. by Jack Keeney, the UCD captain, who uh, is under pressure there, but uh, he wins a free kick there, and it's, uh, it's uh, Joe Manley who fouls him, and it's a free kick to UCD. That's all come from a really poor ball out of the back four, though. We've seen that a lot in the Bray game, and it brought a lot of problems uh, around for Longford Town. And they're bringing pressure on themselves here now again because it's it's forced Longford into making a foul. And UCD, they're filling the penalty area. Good chance for them to get the ball in. Uh, it's whipped in by uh, Kerrigan to Mahadi! And the flag, the flag was is up. up. Good stop from Lee Stacey, but um, my heart stopped there for a minute. I thought Maddie had broken that offside trap. and. He had a lot of space inside that area, but uh, we'll give Longford the benefit of the doubt. Looks like they got the, the line right uh, on that occasion, but I think I'd prefer to see a man like Maddie Mar marked in, in those type of situations. As soon as I saw the ball going to Maddie, I looked across yeah. and was relieved to see the flag go. Good quality delivery, though. Um, the, the, the free free kick taker, he can't do anything about the man not timing his run, so uh, he's done his job, and unfortunately for UCD, Maddie just didn't time that run correctly, and the flag went up, luckily, from a Longford point of view, but a good save from Lee Stacey. And Luke Ball just uh, plays that down to no man's hand, goes out for a throw, and Mick McDonald take this, but 25 yards out from the end line on the left, plays it to Lee Stacey, the Longford Town goalkeeper, brings it outside his box now, and he'll... Uh, uh, play a diagonal ball from uh, the, the centre to the left and Dean Byrne Lovely looks play. like playing that through to Adam Evans his oceans of space whips a ball towards the penalty spot but uh, not enough purchase on that cross and easily clear but it goes out for a long for town throwing and A. Durvin has this ball now and he takes it quickly to Dean Zamber Dean Zamber tries to play it back to A. Durvin A. Durvin brings it under control it's under pressure from Kerrigan who tackles ricochets but uh, Kerrigan is judged to touch it last and it's a long for town throwing it's a long for town putting the pressure on here comes to Rob Manley the left side of the penalty area and whipped in there by Evans to Sam Verdon is foul but the referee play ways play on there Sam Verdon going down under the challenge of Luke Bohr but Luke Bohr breathes a sigh of relief the referee ways play on what's your opinion of oh, that 100% move? a penalty Tony he's got to that ball first and the UCD player is a clumsy tackle he's come through the back of the man uh, Darrod Oil furious over on that touchline over the far side that was definitely a penalty well, I was presumptuous, and I said, and that's a penalty, and it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, you can add that to a, to a long list of decisions here that have been poor from the officials so far tonight. Dylan Hand with the three kick for Longford. This is more encouraging for Longford, the direct route, paying dividends in the early stages. Oh, well done by Dean Byrne. He gets the better of Josh Collins. Uh, Josh Collins then adjudged to have been fouled by Dean Byrne. Soft enough and a free kick for UCD. I was certainly was blowing for a free kick to Longford there. The UCD man's all over the back of Dean Byrne and Dean Byrne just applies the slightest pressure. He leans into the man. He doesn't give him a push, doesn't use his hands at all and, and the referee adjudges that it, it's a push in the back. A, a really poor decision again. Uh, Dean Zamber hits that over to Dean Byrne and Dean Byrne uh, wins that challenge with Michael Gallagher but Michael Gallagher gets it back off and great defender by Gallagher back to Josh Co uh, Collins who whips that ball high but it's uh, cleared by Joe Manley and uh, the Longford Town bench are claiming the ball has gone out but it's uh, play on and it's with Evan Weir the goal scorer for UCD with the last attack of the first half and great play by him and he plays it to Dignam back to Weir but uh, that's cleared by Dylan Hand on the penalty spot and goes out for a throw for UCD Kieran. Yeah, Longford starting to apply a bit more pressure, but there's a, a reminder again from UCD that they are lethal on the counter-attack, so Longford again, they need to get the balance right between attacking and, and sitting back. Yeah, well, whatever about uh, winning this contest, Longford Town do not 
need to lose this game tonight no. because then even a playoff spot is under threat. Yeah, well, I did say it before the game that personally, from my point of view, I'd be happy with a point here tonight against uh, against the UCD side that that are definitely rivals for for a playoff spot. Longford have that derby against that loan. They don't they don't want to go into that off the back of another defeat. So a big big uh, what have we got left? Uh, well, forty minutes or so here at uh, Bishopsgate. Big forty minutes for Longford. And Evans found Rob Manley to Dean Byrne, but. Uh, that is intercepted by Dignam and it's now with Colin Whelan who's very deep back helping out defence and uh, UCD still have possession of the ball and Whelan has it there and he loses it and it's played down the flank towards I think that's Adam Evans it is but it's cleared out of play by Harry McAvoy and that's a throw into Longford Town so Longford Town exerting a good bit of pressure but there is that danger on the counter yeah and we're seeing a lot more Dean Byrne in this second half he's picking the ball up higher up the pitch he was having to come very deep he was almost playing as a defensive midfielder at times in the first half he was dropping that deep to get possession uh, but good to see him picking the ball up about 20-30 yards outside the area and if they can keep getting him on it you just never know he could make something happen ball into the area Manley could challenge around the back post is shooting oh, the brilliant goal and Longford Town back in it what a great start. I did say, Kieran, it's very encouraging. Longford Town putting you to the under pressure direct game. Just had to be wary of being caught on the counter. And there you go. Shane Worthy. Great finish. One all. Yeah, you love to see that from. Uh, I know he's a full back, but he, he plays as a winger at times. And it, it's, it's crucial for wingers to try and get into that area when there is a cross to try and gamble on the back post. You don't see a lot of wingers do that these days. El Worthy done it. He slipped in between the two UCD centre halves. They've been caught napping. The UCD boss, he's going to be really, really disappointed with that, Andy Myler. That's a cheap goal to give away. But from a Longford point of view, they've had a lot more purpose about them at the start of this second half and uh, let's hope they can give UCD a right storm here now so great for Longford Town to get back into this contest usually start very sluggish in the opening 10-15 minutes of the second half and usually made to pay in the second half but it's your way around this time great opening 10 minutes to Longford Town back in the contest do you know what I actually think is helping there's a lot of decisions going against Longford at the minute the crowd is getting whipped up the coaches on the side are in a bit of a frenzy and it seems to have lifted Longford you often see that sometimes when decisions go against a team it just lifts everyone and it gives them that extra 5% they really want to to make amends for those decisions not going their way and I think we're seeing that from Longford the work rate has picked up tremendously in the start of this second half and I can see Dara Doyle over there he's waving his arms he wants more effort from the players they're giving everything now at the start of this second half they need to continue that for as long as possible they certainly do and Shane Elworthy with uh, two assists this season but I do believe that's his first goal of the season for Longford Town in the first division and what a crucial goal that could be especially if Longford Town who are putting in a sterling second half display in these early stages go on to win this contest we're saying we'll be, we'll be happy with a draw but now I'm going to get greedy and want to win and he took the goal really well Tony because uh it was, he had a lot of time to think about it. It's up in the air for a long time. It, it's coming down. He's probably thinking, do I go for a low stoop and header? Do I swing on the volley? He's actually used his ankle and he's, he's flicked it into the net almost uh, acrobatically. So a really good finish from, from what is a defender. But he's uh, showed a lot of a uh, creative and attacking spark there. And there was great off the ball play. But I think it was Rob Manley who drew a couple of defenders away from yeah. him from El Worthy and that gave El Worthy the space and a good finish to boot as well and here's Manley again now and again he's a player you want to see getting on it more in this second half and getting a high up the pitch he was one that had to drop deep and out wide at times here's El Worthy he's going to try and be the assist this time and that was in towards Verden he may have just made a slight That's contact a there soft there. three out no, no, in fairness uh, I think by the letter of the law probably is a foul it was a really really good cross though from El Worthy he's got a goal he was trying to get himself on the assist chart there a good ball in towards Sam Verden he just misses it and he makes contact with Healy and it is the correct decision from the referee but again but good play is, from Longford this is probably Longford Town's most encouraging opening quarter hour of a second half for a long long time Kim. yeah well I've mentioned it already Dean Byrne getting on it a lot more Rob Manley picking it up higher up the pitch and there was another example Shane Elworthy we didn't see him up in the opposition half too much in the in the first half he was pinned back doing defensive work but he's uh, he's played a big role he's got a goal almost got an assist there so Longford need to keep getting their big players involved as much as possible Josh Collins under pressure there, slices it out for a throw-in. So uh, I have to say, Rob Manley, he's very good off the ball as well as on the ball. And he creates lots of opportunities with his off-the-ball running as well. And that's another example as Dean Zambra has possession. 
but Yo-Yo Mahadi comes back and dispossesses A. Durvin and now UCD can launch a counter-attack and uh, it's now with Kerrigan Kerrigan 30 yards out he uh, plays that ball down right and it's whipped back in towards Colin Whelan but it's cleared by Dylan Hand and now Longford Town can a launch here. a counter-attack there and it's with uh, Manley good play by Adam Evans to feed Manley cuts inside the box and he shoots but it takes a deflection off Josh Collins and goes out for a corner but a good counter move there by Longford Town and the game has broken into life here Tony it's end to end at the moment it's becoming really stretchy you, you heard me say there during that move there was a lot of space for Longford to work with Evans takes the ball down he turns he looks up he sees there's a lot of uh, space to run into he feeds Manley and as we've seen multiple times this season with Manley, his first thought is to drive at the back four and try and get a strike away. He doesn't care if it's left foot or right foot. He'll do his best to get a good strike away. He done that there. He's earned long for the corner and it's going to be Dean Zambra to take. Yeah, so corner for Longford Town on the left. He gives the signal, two hands up in the air. And now Dean Zammer, a bit of uh, pushing in the box. It comes towards... Savonin! Oh, what a save! Saved brilliantly by Lorcan Healy. Dean Zammer's corner comes in. And uh, Sam Vernon leans forward and gets a header to the ball. Goal bound it was. But he pounced across to Lorcan Healy and pushed it out for another corner for Longford Town to be taken by Zammer. Whips that in towards Joe Manley. Oh, and then it is uh, coming to Moore's McDonald, but now it's out with Sam Verdon back to A. Durvin and A. Durvin whips that off uh, Mark Dignam it comes back to A. Durvin and A. Durvin plays it to Shane Elworthy could be a better first oh, touch Shane. and oh poor play by Whelan let's go under but used to still have possession with Keeney now and Keeney plays that out to Michael Gallagher Michael Gallagher under pressure of Dean Byrne forced to go back to Harry McAvoy Harry McAvoy forced to go back to the keeper Lorcan Healy first half was very boring second half has been very entertaining <laughs> yeah it's all happening here but Longford what they can't afford to do now is let UCD get a foot on it and try and take the sting out of this game Longford wanted frenetic they wanted a little bit crazy at the moment because the space is opening up and we'll see that again now as A. Dervin carries it forward and Zamba receives and in the first half when Zamba was receiving balls in that area he had a lot of time and space but that was a poor pass Verdon probably could have done more as well UCD on the charge now good tackle from uh, Mick McDonald out for a corner and that's a needless corner to give away when Longford were just starting to build a bit of momentum yeah Luke Bohr he rampages forward from the back line and charges forward runs with the ball and Mick McDonald very good there to come across and uh, tackle Bohr and concede the corner so Longford Town after all the good play in the second half they need to be alert from this set piece as it looks like Kerrigan is uh, just jogging across to take this corner on the left for UCD and Kerrigan now just puts the ball inside a little arc no signal from UCD but he just runs up and hits the back post and it goes towards Josh Collins but it's cleared I think it was McDonald cleared yeah. it back to Kerrigan and Kerrigan inside the box trying to create space for a shot he does but he shoots that about 20 foot over and about 7 foot wide yeah, yeah but he's playing very very well Tony I have to say uh, Kerrigan he's he a really good dribbler he never lets the ball get uh, too far ahead of him it's, it's, it's glued to his feet at times and he uh, he almost showed us that there he, he Ran across the box and as you said, his shot goes a long way wide. He's just slightly off balance as he hits it. But to, to get himself into that position, he had to show a certain level of skill. And good play from Kerrigan. Again, Durbin's been brilliant tonight and he chips the ball up the line to Evans who races onto it. Evans shows his turn of foot to win it. Will he get a second time around? Potential foul on him. Referee says no. It's with Colin Whelan now. Whelan forced into a mistake and that'll be a long for throw. But we're going to see the first change of the night and it's going to come from the students. And it's going to be Colin Whelan going off here for uh, UCD and he is going to be replaced by Paul Doyle who I mentioned before the game I yeah, surprised, we were surprised he was on the bench I think this is an attempt from Andy Myler to try and settle the game down he's, he's going to get his playmaker on here now the man that everything seemed to go through in that um, first meeting between Longford and UCD a lot of the play in the midfield went through Paul Doyle and I think that's what he's going to want here from Doyle get your foot on the ball and just try and calm things down because uh, the more frenetic this game goes at the moment it seems to be favouring Longford yeah, and Paul Doyle on the field of play for UCD here. And uh, that's a, a good substitute to have onto the field of play. Colin Whelan has been dangerous to UCD and getting amongst the goals, but he's gone off. And Paul Doyle, another dangerous player, who was very impressive when the two sides met uh, in the UCD ball yeah. in the first game back after the break. I um, was imagining that maybe Maddie might play less of a free role now and play more as a natural number nine, but it seems to be actually Kerrigan that has... Uh, decided to occupy the uh, the Longford centre half so we'll keep an eye on that and um, they'll probably chop and change at times Kerrigan and Maddie but uh, they've still got a real threat up there 
Yeah, and Paul Doyle wearing the number 21 jersey. And it's with Shane Elwer, he just inside his own half, tries to play that down to Sam Verdon, but uh, Ball gets the better of that, and he finds Dignam, uh, sorry, he finds Keeney, he tried to find Dignam, but oh. loses possession of Ball, Rob Manley doesn't uh, manage to get that under control, and it goes back to uh, the UCD goalkeeper, and uh, UCD will try and come away and launch their own attack, it's hit towards the centre circle, Zamba heads that ball, but it's cleared by the head of Harry McAvoy, it's there Paul Doyle, uh, brings that down but Sam Verdon tackles him goes back to Mick McDonald out to Shane Elworthy he's under pressure from Weir but tries to play a diagonal ball through to uh, Dean Byrne but Harry McAvoy with a crucial intercepting header there and Gallagher plays it back to McAvoy McAvoy to Keeney and uh, Gallagher back to McAvoy McAvoy with a big up and under but Dylan Hand volleys that ball back but it's headed back in by Keeney but it's played back in by A. Durvin towards the left flank and it's Adam Evans versus Harry McAvoy and Adam Evans wins the throwing I think uh, Rob Manley uh, winning the throw in there but really good play from Manley again selfish stuff from him he's peeling out wide he chases down that little chip into the corner by, by A. Dervin and he uses his strength to hold off a couple of UCD defenders and, and wins the throw let's see if Longford can create something here they'd love to get another cross into that box Shane Elworthy is again occupying the back stick it's back towards A. Dervin he's going to have to be tight with his touch he wasn't tight enough and I think that's Paul Doyle nipping in there and Doyle wins the, uh, the free kick for UCD yeah, and uh, UCD can just slow the game down now and uh, sort of uh, get a breather after all that Longford Town pressure. Yeah. And uh, Adam Evans with the throw in there that time, but he went short where it didn't come up at dividends. And as you said, yeah, it was Rob Manley that won the throw in. Very hard to work out which of the two it is down in that far left corner. Floodlights wouldn't be the strongest here at Bishop's Gate. Played across to Luke Bohr. Luke Bohr. Oh, brilliant play. He dummies uh, Sam Verdon and comes into the Longford Town half now. He tries to play that ball over to Yo Yo Mahdi, but it's uh, easily gathered by Lee Stacey. Plays that out to Joe Manley. Joe Manley coming forward with the ball and he plays it to Dean Byrne, but Dean Ooh. Byrne tackled by McAvoy and Paul Doyle takes up possession, plays it to the right, back to McAvoy, to Keeney, and uh, I think that's Dignam now back out to. Uh, this side towards Evan Weir but Longford Town come away with it it's Sam Verdon Sam Verdon to Shane Elworthy down the right Shane Elworthy under pressure from uh, Dignam it takes a, a ricochet off Dignam and goes out for a corner to Longford Town so another opportunity for the Red and Black Kieran yeah good play again from Shane Elworthy when he gets that ball and gets his first touch right he always has uh, a lot of green grass to run into there and a couple of good touches from him just to progress down the line Cross wasn't the cleanest, but it was blocked down. He's, he's earned long for the corner, and uh, it's going to be Adam Evans to go over and take this one. Bray with a big goal. They have gone 2-1 up against Cove now after 65 minutes, so Bray look like they're going to stay top of the table tonight as things stand, but it's Evans that whips the ball in. It's a little bit flat. It's headed away by the first man. That's disappointing from Evans. Can Longford recycle possession here? Mick McDonald gets his toe on it, and he's done well to find Rob Manley. Oh, sorry, this is Manley here. Good touch, is it, from Manley? It is, and a strike oh! goal! It's just wide! Just wide, I think the keeper might have got a touch, uh, it's gone out for a corner. Uh, I think it was Joe Manley over the far side that actually played that ball into his brother. Good first touch from Rob, gets the strike away. And uh, Longford causing a lot of threat from oh, them wide positions. Definitely, the Manley brothers combining. And I, I thought he'd uh, taken a touch too many, but he managed to get his shot across the face of goal and just tipped up beyond the far post of corner. Another good move there for Longford. Zamba hits that corner in oh, towards Sam hard. Verdon, but it comes out to Adam Evans. Adam Evans puts it back in, but there's Luke Ball with the clearing header. And uh, Dylan Hand! We have a volley from 23 yards out. Good effort, just over the crossbar. Much better from Longford Town. They're not letting UCD breathe at all. When a ball is cleared out, there's another Longford player ready to get on the end of it and either get a cross in like we've seen with Adam Evans. That was a really clever reverse pass from Evans. The header came out to uh, Dylan Hand. Acrobatic volley. It flies just over the bar, but good pressure been exerted on that UCD goal now from Longford. And Athlone have gone 1-0 up away to oh. Wexford. So Athlone could be uh, on the way to another victory there ahead of the L Classic 
Classic Girl coming up on Friday between Athlone Town and Longford Town in the Athlone Town Stadium. So that ball goes to Shane Elworthy and Shane Elworthy under pressure and Kerrigan who seems to be struggling a bit and he could be substituted yeah. in the next couple of minutes. It's back to Mick McDonald and Mick McDonald plays it back to Lee Stacey as Paul Dog comes charging in. <laughs> Lee Stacey decides to dribble it by him. Heart and mouth time there for Longford Town supporters. Yeah, Joe Kerrigan's Manley. just sitting down here yeah. in front of us. I'd imagine that's uh, his night done and that's going to be a big blow for you today and sportingly there from Joe Manley he puts uh, the ball out he certainly does and he will be a big loss for UCD because he's played very well in the second half it might be the whole uh, game actually it might be a UCD man that's down injured but Dara Doyle is going to make a change anyway in terms of Longford here Aaron McCabe over on the sideline of course, uh, we've got great memories already from the few games we have streamed here at Bishop's Gate of McCabe coming off the bench, getting those two goals against Wexford. He got the winner up in Galway as well. And um, he, he almost got a, a late goal here against Drotter as well. He was slipped in behind and unfortunately for him, his, his touch just evaded him. And it could have been a chance for another late winner. He seems to be a man that just pops up in the right place at the right time. And it'll be interesting to see who he's going to come on for here for Longford. Yeah, and it looks like uh, Kerrigan, unfortunately, from the student's perspective, may not be able to continue. He's uh, limping and he's just uh, shaking his foot up there. And to see how he recovers or not will be interesting. It's Longford Town substitution. Substitution for Longford Town, number 15, and McCabe replaces number 20, Dean Byrne. Yeah, so as we alluded to, Dean Byrne will need another couple of weeks before he's able yeah. for a full 90 minutes and he's replaced by Aaron McCabe. I think that makes sense from a Longford point of view. That there's no point in, in getting 90 minutes out of him um, if, he, if he's not able for it after six months off, uh, just trying to nurse him back slowly. And he looks, He's showing little signs here and there, Tony, of getting back to him, his old self. We've seen in the first half where he beat a couple of men on the edge of the box and his shot was just over the bar. But um, Longford just need to be careful with Dean Byrne. But they've, they've got a good replacement here in, in Aaron McCabe. He, he's a, a real goal threat. He, uh, he is. I asked him previously where his best position he feels is. He, he does feel he's more of a more of a striker, but um, plays kind of a number ten role. I think when he comes off the bench, obviously he's uh, not going to dislodge Rob Manley just yet from that uh, centre forward position. But uh, it gives uh, the UCD midfield and, and backline just something to think about because McCabe will pick up uh, very dangerous positions. He certainly will. And Longford Town on the attack again. Dean Zamber. Dean Zamber to Adam Evans. And Adam Evans still has possession. He's forced back to A. Durvin. And A. Durvin, he plays it back to Dylan Hand. And Dylan Hand lets that ball run through to Lee Stacey. And uh, Lee Stacey plays it across. It comes across Mick McDonald. He pl plays it to Sam Verdon. Halfway inside the opposition half to uh, Manley. And Rob Manley does well. He gets better, better at Jack Keeney. Holds on to possession, running towards the 18-yard box. Tries to switch that wide, but it's it's under hit. And you see him come away. Paul Doyle he turns his body and he plays that to Michael Keane. The, the substitute has just come on the field to play. He tries to play in Yo-Yo Mahadi. But uh, Mick McDonald just do well and shepherd yeah. that ball out. Great defending by Mick McDonald. Great stuff from Mick McDonald. He's, I suppose he's still relatively new to the League of Ireland. Mick McDonald came from um, the Leinster Senior League what, probably two and a half years ago now but uh, he's one of the more experienced players in this Longford side he's been an ever stay uh, aside from injuries here and there he's been a, a mainstay in that centre half position for Longford and he used all of his ex experience there certainly did and uh, you see on the attack now and Dignam tries to play it in but he does come back out to Dignam from Mahadi on the left here he's a good space here to cross that ball towards Mahadi and it's missed by Joe Manley and Mahadi was just two yards behind the ball so the danger clear by Longford Town and uh, Adam Evans back helping out defence but it uh, comes back in to Paul Doyle poor touch from him Dean Zamba wins that plays it to Sam Verdon surrounded by three UCD players and Jack Keeney dispossesses him plays it to Mark Dignam and Mark Dignam well that's into no man's land he was looking for Yo-Yo Mahadi but well over hit and easily gathered by Lee Stacey I'd like to see a little bit more from Sam Verdon Tony that was another loose touch from him and the ball broke away and thankfully from a longer point of view UCD weren't able to do an awful lot with it but uh, he's just drifting in and out of the game at times here uh, Sam Verdon he's got immense quality in the locker we'd like to see a bit more from him at times A. Durvin does well there to hold off uh, that challenge and it comes to Elworthy down the right now he's getting the better of Evan Weir and uh, he whips that ball towards the penalty spot it's cleared I think that's Josh Collins with a headed clearance back out to Elworthy to A. a. Durvin A. Durvin whips that one towards the penalty it's that handball surely it has to be given that has to be a penalty no, he's unbelievable 
and Adam Evans there with the shot. That is absolutely incredible stuff, Tony. He's either got to give a free kick for a push there, or he's got to give the penalty. The UCD man has clearly gone up Michael with his Gallagher. hand. Yeah, yeah, just as he's losing his foot in Gallagher, it's hit off his arm. His arm is above his head. That is a penalty every day of the, of the week. If he gives the free kick, we can have an argument about that, whether it was a push or not. But if he's not given that, there's no way he can wave play on. Two wrongs don't make a right. Poor refereeing. Yeah, and Longford Town... We'll be disappointed with the outcome there. Gallagher is down injured, but he, it was handball to me. <laughs> I know the rule for handball is, it has changed, uh, but uh, that looked a penalty to me. Yeah, his hands above his head. It's hit his hands, uh, whether he's meant to do it or not. His arms in an, un an unnatural position. Um, I wonder if he maybe just twisted his knee as he went down there. That would be unfortunate. But still, if your arms above your head, no matter what the circumstances, you're looking for trouble. If the ball hits it, it definitely did hit it there. It was clear as day, and you said he get away with that one. Yeah, and it's still one goal apiece, and Cabo nil, and Galway nil, but Galway down to ten players, so. Uh, I suppose a draw from Longford Town perspective may be the best result there, but Galway down to 10 men, draw 0-0 with Cabin TV. We have played 72 minutes and 51.62 seconds of this contest here at Bishop's Gate. Still, Longford Town 1, UCD 1, Evan Weir with the goal right in half time, cracking the ball to the roof of the net to give the students the lead. But of course, Shane Elworthy with the equaliser for Longford Town. And Longford Town have been much, much better in the second half, Kieran. Shane Elworthy has been a totally different player in this second half. He's been really, really key from Longford. Aside from the goal, he's getting forward. He's causing trouble for, for UCD in this wide position just down below us. And it's the Shane Elworthy of last season that we, we've been waiting for. We've been crying out for him all season. He, he hasn't been himself since the lockdown, but this is a much better display from the former Drottler man. So that ball is pumped down, but uh, Harry McAvoy just uh, lets that go out for a throw into UCD. No. Uh, I think they feel uh, he got a touch on it there, one of the UC players. Now, we can't see it from this far over, I have to admit, so I, I can't make a comment on that one. But the, the reaction over the far side was absolutely furious. Sam Verdon looks for McCabe. Oh, McCabe just left it behind him with Elworthy racing in. That was a chance, but it will go to Elworthy now. Can he beat his man and get a cross in? He whips it in. Good low ball. Sam Verdon was almost there. Really good defending there. Josh Collins yeah, Josh immense Collins. there for UCD. Preventing Sam Verdon from getting a touch to that ball goalwards, but Longford Town with yet another corner and Adam Evans Kieran is going to go over and take this Brilliant brilliant play again from Longford. It was just unfortunate there McCabe He just lost his foot and left the ball behind him because Elworthy was in just before that a couple of moments ago He would have been in on goal, but he uh, he did really really well Adam Evans with the corner now here from the right whips that towards the back post and Mick McDonald the header and uh, Manley down, who scores that? Sam Vernon! We spoke about it earlier, Tony. It doesn't always have to go in first time. Longford have recycled possession. They've got it in on the second phase. He was unlucky earlier on, Sam Verdon. He had a brilliant header saved by uh, Lorcan Healy, but there was no stopping that one. He's placed it in the bottom corner, and I said I wanted to see more from Sam Verdon. Well, he's shown us more. Brilliant goal, a huge goal. 2-1 to Longford Town. And Longford Town coming back from one down to lead 2-1. And we've uh, 75 minutes gone of this contest. And a uh, great comeback from Longford Town. Brilliant second half display. Probably, I suppose, with the exception of the first half hour of the second half against Shamrock Rovers 2. This is Longford Town's best second half performance at Bishopsgate, Kieran. And it hasn't really been borne out of any great quality, Tony. Again, you'd probably like to see them have a bit more possession but there's been so much fight so much passion so much heart it's been born out of pure determination this second half performance they've gone and they've hassled UCD like they didn't do in the first half they've made UCD panic in possession they've forced mistakes they've won set pieces and they've punished them with those crosses and set pieces into the area Elworthy with a goal he won the corner there and off that corner Longford have scored so Longford Town leading by two goals to one. A lot of people were saying that Longford Town would be lucky to get a draw out of this game. And uh, Longford looking to push on the advantage to go 3-1 up as Manley has possession of the ball. Plays out to Shane Elworthy, comes into the box, uh, takes a deflection and he gets it back Elworthy to McCabe. Oh. Oh. And it comes out to Jack Keeney on the edge of the box and he just lumps that ball forward. Referee should be stopping play here, that's a head injury. Um, should be stopping I, I think play. it was a fair tackle but McCabe has been absolutely clattered in the process and uh, the referee really should be, should be stopping play but the ball's gone out now, it's going to be um, a goal kick to UCD and McCabe will need treatment but again Longford causing huge problems with them crosses into the area 
Yeah, very good second half display. And as you mentioned, Longford Town go more direct in the second half, mm. and it's definitely paying dividends. And I think you touched on it earlier as well. A lot of the time when the cross is coming in, UCD players are getting sucked in towards Rob Manley. They see him as the main threat. But if the ball is missing Manley, there's always a man that seems to be free. And that was almost the case again with McCabe there at the back post. It certainly was, and that's Sam Verdon's fifth goal for Longford Town in the First Division campaign this season. And what a crucial goal that could be. I have to say, Mick McDonald was excellent there with his header there, and I think, did I say Rob Manley was the other header? And then Sam Verdon with the good finish, low finish, great finish. Yeah, he just places it in that bottom corner. He tried to do it earlier on, and as I said, Healy got a, a great save, but uh, it was a little bit central at the same time, but he's made no mistake there that time. He's, he's drilled it into the bottom corner. Brilliant header from, from Sam Verdon. A huge goal for Longford. And it's all, it, it's going to be um, all about concentration now in these uh, last 13 minutes or so. Obviously, you'd love to see Longford go and wrap the game up with a third and take the pressure off, but we kind of we touched on it they've, they've lacked concentration at times particularly at the start of second halves they lacked concentration at the end of the first half for that UCD goal they can't afford to do that now but at the moment Longford are going after that third goal they're hassling they're harrying the UCD players when they're in possession in their own back line and it's uh, turning up chance after chance for Longford now in this second half and Luke Bohr with a poor clearance there intercepted by Dean Zambert to Sam Verdon Bohr uh, breathing down uh, Sam Verdon's back but he manages to get that ball in but it's a bit too deep Adam Evans will he get there Head to Michael Gallagher he does and Adam Evans holds on to possession Michael Gallagher oh he gets Super better from Gallagher Evans. superb from Adams and now he, he plays that back to Manly Joe and back to A. Durvin and I going back now A. Durvin to Dylan Hand and uh, Dylan Hand will launch this forward but that's, uh, that's cheap. into yeah. no man's land and McAvoy will just allow that to go back to the keeper Lorcan Healy so great second half display yeah. from Longford Town 1-0 down at the break to that Evan Weir goal but uh, two goals to one now, Elworthy and Sam Verdon. Yeah, uh, Dylan has been much better in the second half. I thought he looked a little bit nervy in the first half, but he gives that ball away very, very cheaply there. And as I mentioned, concentration and game management crucial for Longford now, so they can't afford to be giving away possession like that. And uh, Mick McDonald will pick it up here. He's going to go long up towards Manley and Elworthy as he's been doing this entire second half. He chests that ball down and he forces the mistake brilliant play from Shane Elworthy yeah and Luke Bohr just hits that into row Z plus there and a throw in to Longford Town and Longford Town deserving of the three points based on the second half performance Karen. yeah still a long way to go yet though it's only 10 minutes anything could happen UCD they still have uh, some very very talented players out on that pitch Yo-Yo Maddy now is right up there he's occupying Mick McDonald so uh, they, they look to be turning to Maddy now to be the man to try and dig them out of a bit of trouble he had more of a free roll up until now but he's, he's right up there as their, uh, their last line of attack now so UCD will have possession of the ball and uh, Luke Bohr uh, is going across it looks like he might uh, take this throw in and, yeah, and of course if things do stay this way uh, town will be up to fourth on the table so it's, it's a Which huge will be very encouraging yeah uh, it looks like Bray gonna rain top and they're, they're leading 2-1 against Cove down in St Coleman's Park and uh, it's A. Durvin with that ball launched back forward and Evan Ware who makes a mess of that hits off the head of Sam Verdon goes out for a throw and Luke Ball will take that so again UCD will have a throw and deep inside their own half only about six or seven yards from their own end line and uh, Luke Ball will take this throw and he launches it down there over a couple of heads and Dean Zamba wins that comes back to Dean Zamber, tries to find Rob Manley, uh, high boot there by uh, Josh, uh, but uh, the referee allows play to go on there. And Longford going to make uh, another change, I think that might be Carl Chambers over the far side, uh, my eyesight's not as good as it used to be, but uh, we'll update you on that in a minute as Lee Stacey lumps that one long and again that just comes back to game management, can't be giving away cheap possession like that, he's kicked it from one end all the way through to Lorcan Healy at the other end and UCD have a chance now to start an attack deep inside their own half. Now Longford Town have it back with young McKay but it's dispossessed and UCD have possession of the ball now as Harry McAvoy will play that back to his keeper Lorcan Healy and he puts it out of play for a throw in so good pressurising from Longford Town and you're right the substitution being made and Chambers on and it'll be uh, the goal scorer Sam, Sam Verdon I think he may be carrying a little bit of a knock looks to be just carrying his leg a little but uh, huge impact he, he, he's got the job done um, with that goal and uh, he's going to go off now and Carl Chambers a chance for him to uh, to create something in these final 
eight and a half minutes or so. But again, there uh, Rob Manley chasing down the ball and forcing Healy to slice it into the stand. That's what that sec this second half performance has been built off from Longford. It's been pure and utter grit, determination and work rate, Tony. Now, I wasn't at the Bray game, but uh, by all accounts, uh, dismal performance against Bray. Much improved tonight. Yeah, this is night and day. Again, as I said, there's not huge amounts of quality on show, but um, there was a lack of fight in that second half at Bray. You felt when the second goal went in that the game was over, and it was really disappointing then to concede the third the way they did. Uh, Gary Shaw, he, he was gifted two goals here earlier in the season. He got another gift the other night, but um, Longford fighting to the death here. And Evan Weir plays that across... Uh, to uh, Paul Doyle and now comes back to Josh Collins and Collins feeds that to Doyle and he uh, plays that ball down the wing it comes across to Keeney uh, oh sorry not Keeney it, it is uh, the other midfielder uh, for UCD and that is the number 18 for UCD which is Mark Dignan Decent ball from Stacey here up towards the sub, Carl Chambers. He gets his first couple of touches and nice touches there from Chambers. Gets away from his opponent and Longford just going to keep possession. I think they might have to go back to Stacey again. Can he pick someone out? He's got Joe Manley far side. He goes more direct with this one. Chambers does well in the air. He's played in Rob Manley. Manley's first touch is decent. He's just tugged back a little bit but that's uh, decent defending there from Harry McAvoy. And uh, Longford win another corner. Yeah, very encouraging, but Harry McAvoy kept his composure and uh, just conceded the corner. Could have easily been in there, Mandy, uh, if you didn't have a, a, as cool a customer as Harry McAvoy. Yeah, you could easily there. panic in that situation and uh, just pull him down inside the penalty area. You get a red card and Longford potentially go 3-1 up. It's game, game over, but he just tracked the run of, of Rob Manley, stayed with him, did enough to uh, get a tackle in and, and earn uh, Longford a corner. And uh, it's going to be Zamber to take. And Zamber, uh, with the corner from the left, whips that in towards uh, Mick McDonnell and it comes out there oh. to Carl Chambers and it uh, takes a weird spin yeah. just as Joe Manley was about to uh, get a shot in and now comes out to Mahadi and Mahadi under pressure from A. Durvin. And Brilliant, from a. Durvin. Brilliant from A. Durvin. And uh, face the game as Mahadi takes the throw and he finds Keeney back to Mahadi and ah, that's great play pressure from Carl Chambers, Chambers. Yeah. Chambers the two substitutes have just come McCabe and Chambers uh, chasing the ball down together there Longford uh, they're hunting in packs here and they're desperate for the three points they're desperate to hold on to this lead they certainly are as young McCabe has possession of the ball and tries to whip that down but uh, Rob Manley wasn't that advanced forward and now UCD can launch in the back again uh, Lorcan Healy towards Harry McAvoy Harry McAvoy plays a cross field long ball towards the substitute Michael O'Keen with a good header there and Longford Town's Carl Chambers will come away with the ball there he, he showed uh, Keeney a good pa clean pair of heels plays a brilliant ball to the right to Joe Manley inside the box he runs in he whips oh. the ball towards the centre of the goal but it's Joe Josh Collins, who clears the danger and concedes the corner. Brilliant play from Carroll Chambers. He's had a real impact off the bench tonight. He's come off the bench quite a few times this season. and He hasn't really um, contributed a lot, but he's been played maybe more as a right back at times. I think that's Carroll Chambers' best position where he's come on. High up the pitch, out wide, able to cut inside, making things happen. Good ball to Rob Manley. Manley looks to get a low cross into the into the, uh, the goal mouth. It's blocked out for another corner to long for the corner. Stacking up in this second half. Adam Evans whips that corner into the back post towards McDonald. Oh, how has that stayed out? It was Mick McDonald who met it at the back post and Rob Manley, I think it's bounced off him and away. It's back in again. Can Longford create something here? Dean Zambra, he turns down the chance to shoot. Dylan Hand, good ball towards Mick McDonald and towards Rob Manley! 3 oh! 1 to Longford Town! Oh! Unbelievable! Yes! <laughs> Rob Manley with yet another goal for Longford Town. <laughs> And brilliant play and once there. again, Tony, it's the second and third ball that comes in that the goal comes off. Longford have done so well tonight off that. The set piece, it's been good deliveries in there, but you see the defender the initial ball, but Longford have create, uh, recycled the ball. It took two or three attempts to get the final ball in there, and eventually it's Rob Manley doing what he does best, sniffing out the danger. He's there for the tap-in. Great finish from Manley, and a massive three points for Longford Town. And that's his fifth goal of the First Division campaign for Rob Manley. So Longford Town, 1-0 down the break. Everyone was very down and uh, disencouraged about what lay ahead in the second half. And we're all thinking, 
a draw be a great result and suddenly Longford Town are leading 3-1 with just a few minutes to go and I'm struggling to recall the last time before this game tonight Longford actually scored off a set piece well they've scored off two tonight the deliveries have been absolutely excellent and as I said it's been the second and third balls the second and third phases into the box that have caused the real problem for UCD Longford getting bodies up around that area looking for the second ball looking for the third ball and getting good quality deliveries into the area and it's paid off for Longford 3-1 here with four minutes remaining so in the last three games, a draw against Strada here at Bishop's Gate. Then that disappointing 3-0 loss away to Bray on Friday. But a 3-1 advantage here now. And uh, Longford Town surely well on the way to a crucial victory and three points. So don't uh, write off the title hopes just yet. And there's Carl Chambers again winning possession. And in fact, winning a free kick, I think, for Longford. Indeed, he has. He has been brilliant, brilliant off the bench. Since he's come McCabe on. had the impact here against Wexford off the bench. Well, tonight it's been uh, Carl Chambers. So big well done to Darrod Oil, his substitute. So he has the motivator coming off the bench because they're doing the job for him in these big games. They certainly are and Longford Town are looking for a fourth one here. Free kick to the left there and uh, Dean Zambert is over this. He gives the signal. There are six Longford Town players in that penalty area. It comes in and uh, Dylan, Dylan Hands <laughs> just <laughs> wide with a header. It, was looking, it seemed to be going to the head of Mick McDonald. Then Dylan Hand leapt up and floated across, got his head to it, and it just went inches wide at the far post. Good move there for Longford Town. Almost a fourth goal, Kerry. Yeah, and I think that was Joe Manley sniffing in around the back post. He almost got on the end of that. If that header from uh, Dylan Hand had been a little bit uh, lesser, less power in it, then Joe Manley might have been getting in for a tap-in. But again, all of the Longford uh, centre-halves, they've all proved very, very dangerous in the opposition area Carl Chambers now with a lovely spin into McCabe McCabe turns he's got options he's probably going to have to go back but that's ab absolutely fine Longford don't need to force it at this stage and in fact it goes all the way back to Lee Stacey and Carl Chambers of course has uh, come up to the underage ranks here at Longford Town into the senior team he's six or seven seasons at yeah, the club now he's a serving player by, uh, by a country mile at this stage not far away from the testimonial now and uh, <laughs> he's, he's had a huge impact tonight it's great to see Chamber back to his best because as I said we haven't really seen much of him this season and when he has come off the bench it's been in more of a defensive position but up there, I agree with you he's better in the position he's, he's better up tonight. there yeah he's playing with, with flair and freedom and it's great to see as Rob Manley and A. Durvin work together to win the, win the ball back it's up towards McCabe he'll be hoping he can get in on the score and act now and he heads it inside towards Rob Manley those two seem to be developing a bit of a link already but uh, the move eventually breaks down and UCD come away with possession and Evan Weir plays it back to Keeney there. Keeney back to Evan Weir. Oh, good pass to uh, Keeney. But uh, A. Derwin putting the pressure on. And it goes to Mick McDonald. He plays it down to Joe Manley. He heads it down to Aaron McCabe. Aaron McCabe running forward now. He's boring. Collins there plays it out wide right to Joe Aww. Manley. I mean, Rob Manley. And Rob Manley just slices that ball. Uh, over the bar I think he was looking for a, a cross option but took his eye off the ball we've actually seen that quite a lot this season where crosses haven't been great and they've floated out for goals but that's the first time it's happened tonight the deliveries have been brilliant but again linking up there was uh, McCabe and Rob Manley they seem to be forming a, a great partnership up there so maybe uh, McCabe throwing his hat into uh, his name into the hat for, for a starting team and a starting place in this team because um, if he's going to kind of get more out of Rob Manley that can only be a positive for Longford five minutes goes up on the uh, fourth officials board but UCD they look a beaten team at this stage they're making a lot of mistakes now they look tired and uh, there might be another goal in this one yet for Longford and hopefully there will be because the goal difference could be crucial as Mick McDonald launches that down towards Rob Manley but that will go harmlessly out for a throw -in. so we're into the stoppage time now Longford Town with a 3-1 advantage and a great second half display it wasn't looking good when Evan Weir put UCD ahead 1-0 but then Shane Elworthy with the equaliser and then of course two further goals has put Longford Town 3-1 up yeah, so and great uh, display from Longford Town in the second half Ed Irvin certainly not resting on his laurels out there uh, the minute that ball out went, went out for the throw he was roaring at his teammates to go and box UCD and as a result Longford have turned over possession Elworthy tries to find McCabe who's making himself busy off the bench yet again and Ed Irvin with a flying header there brilliant play from the Longford local man as it goes to Dylan Han now and he heads that aimlessly away could have done a bit better there Dylan Han perhaps but can UCD punish Longford Han flies into a tackle but well done to Han he recovers well and he gets it second time of asking and uh, Joe Manu just knocked this back to the keeper Lee Stacey Got Sam Verdon uh, out injured for a few weeks probably not the sharpest uh, he was on the bench 
uh, I think against Bray and uh, playing tonight but he got that crucial second goal and then Rob Manley yeah. on the score sheet again the goal is beginning to flow for Rob Manley yeah that's going to be crucial going forward as you mentioned the goal difference uh, the tally's not the best at the moment so uh, if Rob Manley can go on a bit of a score and spell then that's good news for Longford and he's given Aaron McCabe a yellow card there the ball hit off McCabe's foot and and ran away as he tried to retrieve it. There was absolutely no um, sniff of time wasting there at all. But uh, the referee, not for the first time tonight, he's been a bit. Um, he's jumped into a couple of decisions at times. Yeah, I wouldn't be the best uh, referee in display, even though Longford Town are leading by three goals to one. Joe Manley with the ball back to Lee Stacey. And Lee Stacey back to Manley, just launches the up and under. That's the best, safest way to get rid of that ball and the danger. But uh, UCD lose possession. Dean Zamber has it now, takes a touch, he holds possession, then loses out. And uh, it's ricocheting, ping ponging around there. Longford Town had possession again with A. Durvin. What an engine uh, that young man has! Yeah, it's brilliant from Durvin, but there was two or three players involved there again. They were hunting in packs and the fight and the passion and the desire from Longford in this second half uh, the, the fans are absolutely loving it and they're on the break again here Adam Evans can he pick someone out it's headed away by Josh Collins but again Evans will get another chance he goes back to Dean Zambra Zambra dinks it forward brilliant play Evans a lot of space out on this left and he's got another chance to cross it's a low cross Aaron McCabe and for once McCabe off the bench his touch just isn't um, crisp enough and the ball runs away from him but again I think you can see it here Tony use of these legs they ran themselves into the ground their race is run they're not going to be taking anything from this game no they certainly aren't going to be taking anything from this game but Longford Town uh, need to just uh, probably safety first just hit the ball I think long and clear I and, think they're and, on such and, a high yeah. at the moment the adrenaline is pumping and, I, I and don't like that messing around at the back <laughs> not a fan of the tick attacker well, style of football in the right circumstances yeah. <laughs> but I don't think uh, that's what has, this second half has been about from Longford we, we've touched on it a few times it's been pure heart fight determination yeah. they've rolled the sleeves up and they've got the job done and You'll obviously like to see a little bit more quality on the ball maybe against uh, Athlone on Friday in the derby. But again, that's a derby, so you're going to have to bring these fighting characteristics into the game. But Longford are going to go into the game on a high, and that can only be good news given their record in uh, recent years against Athlone. Can they get a final goal to put the cherry on the cake? It's played in there by Rob Manley towards Chambers. I have to say, Chambers was immense there as He's well. Everywhere. He, he created the move. Uh, the last move, it was Chambers at the heart of the move as well. He is everywhere. He's everywhere. He started on this right-hand side. He's uh, over on the left now. He's popping up centrally. He's been uh, he's been absolutely all over the place. He's he's been absolutely brilliant off the bench. And, and Dara Doyle will give him a big a big pat on the back after this one. Yeah, Aaron McKay quiet tonight coming off the bench, but it's Kyle Chambers who has been brilliant. And all you need is one of your substitutes to make an impact. And that yeah. man tonight has been Kyle Chambers. Aaron McKay with the headed there. Doesn't get enough pressure on but gets it back and uh, comes back to A. Durvin. A. Durvin will play that to Mick McDonald, about 10 yards inside his own half, and he launches that towards Shane Elworthy. But uh, Evan Ware would just allow that ball to go out of play. I don't think Longford Town will be too disappointed as that takes more seconds off the clock as we are deep, deep into, I think, the last minute of stoppage time here. Indeed, the that's it. So that's a great comeback. Losing 3-0 to Bray on Friday night. Great second half display. Best second half display of the season by Longford Town. Yeah, we didn't have a lot to shout about in that first half, Tony. It wasn't the best or most entertaining in the first half. And it got even worse just before the break when, when we were raced in to, to finish well and, and give the students the break. And we were a little bit concerned then at halftime. And... Uh, Longford have come out in the second half they've rolled the sleeves up they've shown great fight great passion in that second half and uh, some really really good finishes out there Longford Town a huge three points they move up to fourth of the table and they roll into Atlone now full of confidence and uh, the playoffs after that performance I would say Longford Town would definitely be in the playoffs and who knows five games to go six points off top yeah well I'm going to take a line off Dara Doyle here and uh, say you can't get too high with the wins you can't get too low with the losses so we'll not lose the run of ourselves playoffs title nothing's guaranteed the season has proven inconsistent for all teams yeah. in this first division a couple of good results followed by a couple of poor you results. just don't know what's going to happen in the, in the final few weeks of the season so uh, full time scores running across your screen now big win for Bray Wanderers they win 2-1 away against Cole at low on a win against Wexford that will do their confidence the world will go ahead of Friday's game and it's Cabin Teeley nil Galway nil Cabin Teeley continue to go through a very very difficult patch but Dara Doyle out there embracing all his players he knows that this has been a big one tonight 
And we'll leave it there. Thank you for joining us. Roll on El Clasico on Friday. Yeah, indeed. Roll on El Clasico. And uh, there'll be live audio commentary of El Clasico uh, on the Between the Stripes Facebook and, and Twitter pages. Check out the link there. It's going to be live on Mixler. Uh, free audio commentary for Longford and Athlone fans to tune into on Friday night. But it's Kieran Burke and Tony G signing off from the night. Uh, a very, very happy supporter uh, group here at Longford tonight. Bishop's Gate, 3-1 win for the town over UCD. And a brilliant second half display from the town. Good night.